just go, just go on live. Just, just go on live. That just, joke just, is just. That just joke was just. Me. That joke was just. That just. Oh, uh, we have sound. Oh, <laughs> we have cool. we have sound. Yes, we by a miracle. I'm making sure we have sound before properly starting ish. Oh ish. man. Oh. Hi everybody. You that, missed my terrible joke that I will never repeat again. It was very bad. <laughs> I'm just gonna leave it off I'm, with that. Oof. I'm tired. I took mm -hmm. some psychic damage from it. <laughs> Good. So also, I didn't see any notes. You said you had gave me notes. I didn't see any. Gaming notes? Oh, no, no. Momo gave me notes. He messaged what? me about no, notes. No, in mine, like, you weirdo. Yeah, I know. I checked. I didn't I see wrote, Did you? I wrote those down, though. Are did they forget, in the DM only? Did I forget to save them? Oh, no. Anyway, we're doing a different show Fuck. today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it'll be related. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so, uh, let's start. Uh, there's a docket today. I, I put a thing up. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of uh, things that are going on. Uh, the Glitter Hearts RPG... Uh, then Gen Con 21, 2021, it's actually happening, theoretically, in physical form, theoretically. Uh, is that general convention? So, like, a bunch of retired generals go to a convention? And yes. Didn't uh, Gary Gygax oh, start Gen Con? Uh, he was cards. there, he might have started it, who knows? I can't remember. I know it's, like, over 50 years old. It's ancient. <laughs> it's yeah, an ancient convention. Um... Then we'll talk about a little bit more about Warhammer because apparently Age of Sigmar is getting a new edition. That's Yay. just what, really what I want to bring up. Uh, and then Magical Kitty's RPG, uh, I guess, is gets the level up Kickstarter is coming out soon. We'll talk about that. I have no idea what that is, but it sounds ridiculous. The Kickstarter art looks great because <laughs> it's like it's what is it? Magical Kitty save the world. It's supposed yeah. to be like an RPG. I think about your like your like spell casting familiars that band together to save the oh, world. Oh! I remember was talking about that before. Yeah. That's why you're magic Yeah. Kids. And okay. then uh, we'll talk about uh, RPG lore and using it in your games. <clears throat> and that's lore. Gonna be lore. And that's gonna actually be oh, on a couple shoot. levels there. But, uh, let's start, let's start, uh, well, uh, first of all, I should probably ask, how are everybody feeling this week? Uh, you mean us? Yeah, or are you, you talking about chat? You, <laughs> I don't, I don't think you people that I'm chatting with, you know, the <laughs> physical know. people who don't oh. have pictures that exist in this nebulous kind of thing. Of, uh, I mean, I technically have a picture. I, I just don't like it. Theoretically exist. Uh huh. I uh, besides have my been finger, mostly okay, aside from like being floored from a COVID vaccine again. <laughs> but I'm fully vaccinated now, and my arm really hurts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a bunch of real life stuff that I'm not going to talk about that it's really hard to deal with sometimes. So playing video games with friends makes it a whole lot better. Yeah. And hopefully yeah. talking nerdy stuff with friends helps too. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what happens a lot of times where you mm -hmm. have a discussion about this rule and then... Uh, or like, or like for example, someone says, hey, I want to talk about 2E Pathfinder for real quick. And then you spend like an hour and a half talking about something that has absolutely nothing to do with why or, they called you, and they just like, want to see you suffer. Or, or um, or getting a message from someone being like, "Hey, jump in voice call for two minutes." Oh yeah, that was a thing that happened as well. And then like three hours later, or four or six hours later, <laughs> it was seven for me. Oh no, <laughs> that's too many hours. <laughs> I recall oh. showing up at the late back end of the seven hour conversation. I'm like, what are you yeah, people you, doing? Everybody showed up at one point. And <laughs> I was there for all of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. But anyway. Good, time. good times. It, 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 those are the best times when you start a conversation and you realize, oh my god, how many hours has it been? Oh, fuck. So, uh, Glitter Hearts. It's an RPG coming out by Japanime Games. Um, it's, it's like... Superheroes meets Magical Girl, the RPG. I'm into well, it. Well, uh, it sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's, you say Magical Girls, and I'm sold. Yeah. Uh, and they say it's action-packed. Um, you can create your own hero, build your own team, have your special mascot. There's 150 different moves to choose from and build a magical Ooh. identity. So you get Some every... of these uh, people who also bought this product are like, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, you get an everyday identity, a magical archetype, a mystic connection. Um, 
So, like, it's a... They recommend three to six people in it. I, I, I do enjoy that they're recommending a number of people and, like, other things for an RPG. They're yes. like, it's an RPG, but it's supposed to be, I guess, action-heavy. So, I mean, yeah. for, like, a single session, you just need three to six people, a couple hours to play, and a pair of dice for just a simple, I guess, basic adventure. When uh, when it comes around to talking about games we're in, we can touch on amount of players. Because yeah. That's a thing that's come up fairly often. Amount of players is an important one to think about, and different systems require different amounts of players. Yep. Yeah. Um. And uh, man. Yeah, that, that's that's like an issue that I like. I almost feel like this is a good point in time to bring up because it's not like a full discussion issue. I feel like the number of players you have. I feel like it's it's kind of an addendum to things. Like an addendum to things. Yeah. I yeah. guess I guess we can we can bring it up a little later, like the addendum of number of players. But yeah, um, we'll def- we'll make a book note here uh, about how let's talk about how many players are in our games that we're in. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know what? I'm gonna type that. So feel free to do other things. I really like. There's the uh, bearded man without a shirt on and like makeup on in the background. It's, that's that really is my favorite <laughs> on this part right there. <laughs> It's like, it's like there's, ma- um... he's like, I'm embracing my inner magical girl. <laughs> the best I mean, magical girl. There's a lot of, uh, what, what's the, what's the correct word that you'd like to use for inclusivity or whatever yeah. in this art? Yeah. It's, it's very inclusive. It's very diverse. Very yeah, inclusive. diverse. It's always good. In yes. my opinion. Yes. I, I, I. Mm, like it, it's it's Greg uh, Leatherman's, so I don't know if Greg Leatherman is important. If it this is, if this has is. another product related yeah, to I it, I have no idea who that is. Can I yeah. Google his name? Sure. Uh, I was hoping I could just find it and copy and paste and right click and say Google, uh, but I can't. So I'll have to type it manually with my hands. Who are you, Greg? And who did your art? Okay, so, uh, interesting, interesting. So, I think this has come out technically before, and this is the first physical printing of it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um, because if, in drive through RPG, a PDF version of the same book is out. So, for, for 10.05, and a physical copy, I think, is $30 then. And it's from Leatherman Gra- Games, which I'm guessing is... Mm. Oh, yeah. They, that would make sense, then. person also wrote uh, a Random Encounters book for, hmm. for your tabletop games. Uh, be ready for anything. All the tools you need in one. Uh, Leatherman.com? I don't know if that's... Uh, uh, it's Leatherman.games. <laughs> Ah, there we go. It's right below that. I'm like, that might be coats. <laughs> the other one I think may indeed mm. be coats. I'm, I'm not going to click on it, but there we go. The actual website, Le- Le- Leatherman Games, uh, or Leatherman.games? I don't know. Yeah, Leatherman.games. Yeah, mm. and um, there it is. And Made with squares, basically. and apparently they have a they have a uh, actual play podcast, very random encounters. Yeah, right. I did so. see that one. So, I mean, it's it's neat. Uh, it, you, it's glad to see like a le- like an upgrade happen on something like this. They must have had enough yeah. success that uh, Japanime Games was like, "Hey, we'll print your book for you. We'll yeah, we'll help you." Cool. Yeah, you know. Um, it's one of those things that's like it's very easy to get that PDF only level of stuff, and yeah. it, it's nice to see that like you know you're getting to that point where you're getting a printing for the people. Good, good for them. Oh, I love the archetypes. There's like, oh yeah, you know, warrior, witch, idol. You know, your typical. <laughs> yeah, the, the typical. The uh, typical girl. Uh huh. Of course, uh, you know you just need like. Uh, you which got... element or emotion do you draw your power from? <laughs> um, I draw it from exhaustion. That's where me, my magical power too. comes from. Uh, mine comes from the magical element of coffee. <gasps> I just had a whole bunch of that. I'm currently having. Oh, I finished mine off. I mean, to be fair, it's from 
three hours ago. Oh, nice. That's the best kind of coffee. Well, I mean, you know. Your power of coffee cannot de possibly defeat my power of... Uh, I don't know what power I have right now. Sleeping pills. <laughs> <laughs> There's an actual like word for uh, like the the drug that makes you sleepy. That probably is. I I can't remember. So what it'd, be, it is. it'd be that you're 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 funny big pharma. <laughs> <laughs> That's a villain name for you. <laughs> big pharma. Yeah, it sounds about right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I know, I know. It's kind of meme because that—that's like a real phrase people use. But you could easily turn Big Pharma into a supervillain. This uh. is very true. Uh, I mean, technically speaking, they have that in a way, though, too. Uh, because I'm not gonna get too political here. I'm just gonna go for Shadowrun because some of those big oh, companies right. yeah. are pharmaceutical yeah. companies. Yeah, right. I, I have a Shadowrun book open. It's not actually Shadowrun. It's a different system that I've mentioned way too many times and chatted <laughs> on the show. Mm. So, moving on. <laughs> moving on, though. So, yeah, uh, Glitter Hearts. Uh, if you're looking to get the PDF, it's on sale on uh, Drive -Thru RPG. But if you want a physical copy, they're taking pre-orders now for $30. Which yeah, isn't... it's not too bad for a physical book. Yeah, yeah, for uh, it's like a probably just for like a, like a couple hundred pages or something. Pretty uh, good. Something like that. Looks pretty good. Yeah, the book I it. have open is two eighty five. It would be it'd be another one of it, it's added to the list of this might be interesting to play sometime. Yeah, that list just keeps getting bigger. <laughs> yeah, it really. Does. I well, I might start be doing things like I half organized something for possibly tomorrow, but that's a different. <laughs> You know, half organized. <clears throat> oh, also, win is Bessem. I, I want to play Bessem now. Really yes, bad. yes, <laughs> soon ish. Uh, it's soon, DM. Soon, yeah. So, Gen Con, uh, it's normally, I think, around well, now. Gotta be honest, it's normally around now. It's sort of like when PAX East was going to happen, it instead of its normal February slash March timeline, it was going to be in like June, July. Gen Con, um, they're doing, like, all three of them. So they're still doing a... It's 1968. That is so old. Yeah. yeah. They're still doing an online version of Gen Con at the same time as they're doing normal Gen Con. And I think that's a really good idea to do kind of... you can Because the online one, it doesn't take a lot to do the online version of it. Gotta be honest, in comparison to, like, a physical one where you have to rent space and all this kind of stuff and, and you know, like, manage, like, a lot more people. Uh, I you think it's more effort than you'd think, but... It's, oh, I'm, I'm it's assuming... It's still like, effort, but, yeah. like, you're it's not... It's a different type. It's a different kind of effort, yeah. definitely. I was thinking less that it wasn't effort, less more that it wasn't expensive in comparison. Uh, but you think again, you don't earn, earn the same amount of money either because you don't have the same, you know, companies setting up booths and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, you, you don't have, the, have less advertising. You've different, uh, less like physical advertising as well. You're getting like yeah. digital ads, which are not not that expensive. Yeah. Regardless, they're planning on doing a in person and a online experience at the same time uh, for September 16th through 19th. Um, which, uh, concurrently, uh, my birthday is in the middle of that there, so, you know, I, I didn't think I would be going. One of these years I do want to go to Gen Con, but, like, it's that, it's this weird one that, it's in the nebulous universe of, I feel it's not far enough for me to, like, justify taking a plane, but it'd be really awful to drive there on my yeah. own. Yeah. Like, like, driving up to Boston on my own was bad enough. That's, like, the top end of my I-can-drive-this-distance-on-my-own. This is, uh, Indianapolis? Indianapolis, yeah. Which yeah. con is usually held in Seattle? It's PAX West? That's PAX, PAX West. It's PAX it West pr now, right? Yeah, it used it's, to be Prime, but now it's West, now. West, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's that really is up. a drive for me, and I live in that state. Yeah. <laughs> Um, it, it, it's like a two something hour drive or more depending on traffic and then it's a con so there's like a billion people and it's like yeah. just, you know, five yep. six hours to east it was Oof, I remember PAX East 
That was even further for me. Yeah, I don't think I'd ever go to a con just because the, the only, amount of people um, and and uh, <clears throat> money. The, the only one I really have, I suppose, regu regularly have gone to is is Teco Con in in Pittsburgh because I I live near there and I occasionally. Uh, not the last couple of years have gone to the music and gaming festival in, in Baltimore. That's close. Mm -hmm. Boston's not that close. <laughs> Neither is Indianapolis. Uh, the advantage that I get is that I can technically apply for the... Uh, the only reason I end up going to them is like uh, apply for the press passes. Are you a creator? I'm a creator. No. Uh, mm. I'm not. Not anymore. Uh -huh. I'm I just mean, an idiot. I gotta admit, you two are on here a lot, you know? If you <laughs> you could probably get away with being a creator for yeah, my channel at this like, point in time. Joe, hey, Joe hey, can get it. get in to uh, PAX West when you come over here or something. We'll meet in person. It'll be fine, probably. You can I won't go, have enough. You account. can go for me. <laughs> oh, God, no. <laughs> represent, represent the brand. Oh, <laughs> go. I don't know if he wants that. Control, control, control be an empire. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, uh, conventions for get, me at this GoPro point are just an excuse it. for me to engage in alcohol and go to IHOP at 3 in the morning. <laughs> I don't need an excuse for either of those things. <laughs> like, 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 PAX Unplugged, I feel like it's sort of a work time a little bit for me because, you know... At least it was in previous years, because then I'd like try to be like, hey, can I get people on as guests on the channel? And it was like, that was good and all, but like... That's a fuck ton of work, and it just it's it eats my a lot soul. Of work. It's like at this point yes. in time, it's like maybe just figuring out what people are doing feels a lot better. It's like, oh, what do people have to like show off, you know? And beyond that, yeah, then it's less networking. Yeah, I haven't felt like networking in like months. Though I know you mean, I've mean like a year and a half. <laughs> oh man, yeah. <laughs> I gotta admit, it has been a year and a half technically. I think, I think I was I was okay with networking like around the time of the last PAX Unplugged into that time of PAX East, but I was I was doing a little bit of it then, and then you know PAX you East was sometime around twenty nineteen, uh, early twenty twenty, early twenty twenty <laughs> when some things happened and. There was this threat last time I went to PAX East that had everybody uh, worried, you know, and, like, you know, disinfecting things and, you know, hmm. not shaking hands and stuff like that. Yes. I ain't talking about it. It was just a two-week lockdown. Uh -huh, just a two-week lockdown. But, yes, yeah, so that's that's where my entire... <laughs> anyway. <coughs> so, yeah. So, on May 23rd, they're going to have a limited quality of four-day uh, four, four and single-day badges. Um, and then registration for the online and pop-up Gen Con will be on ju uh, June 27th. I don't know what the pop-up Gen Con is. Um, I have no idea. I could probably Google it and get an article. So they're looking oh, the amount of people that can go? At local game stores uh, hey, through pop-up okay. Gen Con retail activation. So they're ho hooking up with people like like more local game stores around, the, <clears throat> I think it's around the country or something. Oh, uh, Hey, that'd be pretty cool because the one near me is one of them. It's a pretty major be... one and kind of the only one in this area. That'd be kind of cool, yeah. There is Cause... a major uh, store near me that I think could, but they don't do all of the online stuff, so. True. Oh, no. Um, so they were originally <clears throat> planning for August 5th to 8th, but have postponed it to September. I'm guessing because things are stabilizing now, they want to make sure it continues to stabilize. Yeah, that's. I think that's fair. I mean, I'm I'm like just sitting around being like, e are things stabilized? Are they? I don't know. There's part of me. Maybe. That... Possibly. Ah, it's really cold in my room. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> The inside of my house is kind of cold, and it's warm outside, so I've opened some windows, so hopefully that'll at least get us oh, to be, nice. like, outside. I'll get a cold breeze if I open a window. <clears throat> like, I'm at the point in, in my life where I'm just, like, physical cons, sure. However, online ones, I can sit in a comfy chair in my pajamas and watch things instead. Yeah, so... Yes. 
it looks have like, less effort. Yeah, it looks like the so the in-person one's definitely gonna have a capped attendance and a kind of modified format, probably to allow a little bit more. I guess still at that point in time, keeping socially distanced from people and stuff like that, you know, still. That, that makes sense. I mean, though. it's a convention. You're, you're not gonna get that. I'm sorry. No matter how hard you try, oh, conventions yeah. are not germ safe at all ever. Nope. Look, there will be some plague. We'll just hopefully it's not the plague that we're it's, currently suffering. Hopefully, it's from. like the Pax plague or something. Yeah, yeah. Pax plague. Yeah, Pax pox. It's it's we just hope back to that. Yeah. So I mean, it's interesting what they're doing now. Um, it's an interesting approach. I'm definitely gonna kind of wait and see if they're going to do it. They are the first big convention that I've heard about doing anything. I'm sure there might have been some smaller ones up until now, but. At least in the tabletop slash gaming world that I know about, it's the first big one that seems well, to actually be happening. Yeah. <laughs> Everything else has just been probably good. Canceled out constantly. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I've gotten over like the year and a half some refunded tickets just because they were definitely not going to happen. <sighs> More, was... more normal things is better. Very much was looking forward to going to Anthropon. Oh. Yeah, but then the plague happened. No. Oh. I was really, like really looking forward to PAX Unplugged last year. I'm looking forward to this year. But that's the only one that I know about that's in the PAX circuit. That's the next one. Cause but each... if it's unplugged, how will you go online and watch it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Someone bonks to him. <laughs> no. Uh, no, it's Saturday. I've lost my, my ability to do that on Saturdays because of things I have done. <laughs> you lost that power. I, I I've lost bonk privileges on I Saturdays. never I never had the power. Because I'm like, eh, stick. It's too far Umber, out of reach. Umber said I'm not allowed to anymore. <laughs> my game? Or... Yeah, it's because of what I've done in your game. Ah, uh, that makes sense, though. Things have happened. Anyway, uh, I, I'm all for things getting back to normal. I think yes, limiting please. tickets is a good idea. Yeah, like, and the... I miss. I, I I want normal back. I want to go back outside. I want to go to conventions again. Vacations. Yeah, I haven't had a vacation in a while. I want to go back up to like Erie or something. You come over to the West Coast. But then I'm close to California. Well, I have an entire state away from that. True. So there's a buffer. Ah, come here. We'll go go to the capitals that I rent. You know, we can rent them. Everybody can hang around. That's, that's have, really have far an from in person D and D game. Yes. Holy crap! I have never had one of those. I will admit. Mm -hmm. That sounds like a lot of math. <laughs> it is a lot of math, but <laughs> it is... it's also very much hilarious when you don't have a miniature and you just slap like something on the table and like this is a dragon now. <laughs> oh, sweet. <laughs> Uh, how about if... this package of RB sauce? <laughs> this, this is now an ooze monster, all right? No, no, but, my <laughs> but, was, but then someone's um... gonna respond. It's like, when was it an ooze monster? <laughs> no, my my favorite still is uh, years ago at Pathfinder. We didn't have a dragon manager, so my friend just put a shoe on the table and was like, "This is the dragon fight." I was thinking shoe, but that's too big. Look, my favorite has to be the jug of vinegar as a giant dragon. <laughs> And then, and then we had a like, normal miniature on top to be like representative of like a dragon rider. And he's like, ha ha ha. <laughs> nice. Oh, uh, what was next? Uh, next up is uh, <sighs> Age War... of Sigma. Age of Sigma. It's getting a new edition. Thank God. What does that even mean <clears throat> for people? <Probably. laughs> like, to me, it means it might be less bad to play. Although reading this article, they, it looks like they are going to be sticking with kind of like the narrative battle style type thingy because Age of Sigmar is like a narrative campaign system more than a single battle kind of deal. And I don't like that that much because that requires a lot of time. So, as the outsider here, I have only heard certain things about Warhammer. I know a certain person who I think really likes Age of Sigma, but also understands that they did some dumb things with it. But I can't remember because 
my retention knowledge is almost exclusively D and D related these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, fundamentally, there's currently very little wrong with Age of Sigmar. They've fixed a lot of the issues. One of the main issues being it launched without a point system in a miniatures game, which Ooh, was a yeah, that's pretty bad. Pretty bad idea, but it's like fine now. I um, will admit my reasons for disliking it uh, are basically very petty of it is different and i don't i don't want difference <laughs> that's, a, that's the conversation i was having about second edition pathfinder it, it is, is how they different. do spells in there this is, like i don't know if i like this this is different it's so weird. um and i i don't want different i want i want my old world back before it got blown up by it's chaos three old men three old men rant about <laughs> Grumble, 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 back in my day, grumble, back, grumble, back, grumble. Back in my day, we didn't have this stupid horse centaur god. We had a dude with a massive beard named Toddy. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh-huh. Uh... So the Kickstarter thing, what, what, what are they doing? Is it, is it, <laughs> I guess... Is it a Kickstarter, or is it just a new edition? Uh, for what, uh, it, the Magical it's Kitties? It's like a... For, for what? For kitty game? Yeah, for the kitty game. It's a Kickstarter. Oh, I, was, I was thinking of Egg, Egg of Stigmar. Oh, it's, there's like, um, from what I'm reading, it's like a new edition with a new game mode that's supposed to be like uh, officially long drawn out campaigns against players and actual rules for that, even though that's kind of what that system always was, I think. Um, and it looks like they're heavily emphasizing the fact that fantasy warhammer is order versus chaos because there's a bunch of angel miniatures being slapped down in this article mm -hmm. i mean i like me some angels unless they're evil yeah. and then that's not okay then i have to murder them by, um, by law i mean here's here's this this one i think i'm i know oh yep i think i've seen you link this one maybe there was a different one i mean i've linked this one, and I linked, like, a weird vampire centaur. Mmm, I don't mm -hmm. think I've seen that one. <laughs> That's, if you scroll up a little bit, that also got announced, like, a week oh. ago. Oh, I mean, the, uh, oh. oh, oh, yeah, yeah, this thing, I, yep, that's a thing. So, yep, that's, that's terrible. not, that's, that's different. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the thing I will always wait on for, I, I would like to preface this, first off, one, I am absolutely happy that Fantasy Warhammer is getting love again because for a while, Games Workshop only focused on 40k, and I don't care about 40k at all. <laughs> um, two, it, it looks like they're continuing to try to make Age of Sigmar better, which is good. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day it'll be a game I'll want to play when I'm not poor because miniatures are very expensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and three, they do still technically have old warhammer and are still working on updating that really? called the old world that's like five years away though still Oof. um so this is to me good mm -hmm. news um the miniatures are of course always very beautiful and pretty although they're never this pretty when i've painted them because i'm terrible at painting miniatures mm -hmm. um but yeah that's why I don't um, even bother painting because I know I could never get to be as pretty as the yep. painting. It's like, but wow. Pay somebody else. Mm -hmm. I, I do like that they do say the because the the Stormcast Eternals are the the line that's been announced for this. They're like angel people, and they're like, oh, but who are they going to be fighting? Probably chaos because that's who everyone fights in this game. Orcs. Yeah, it's either going to be orcs or chaos. Those are the only two options. Mm -hmm. Do Chaos count as undead? Because I was going to say undead. They're different. Chaos are like dark god stuff. And <sighs> also, there's like a Plague One. There's a Slanesh who's like a super lusty god. Ooh, hello. Um, <laughs> there was a new line. Uh, like a couple months back, there was a, a line of Slanesh figures printed. Oh. And um, one of them was just like a Minotaur in bondage gear. To give you an idea what her her armies are like visually. Oh, oh, oh that's 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 the bonk army. <laughs> that really is the bonk army. Uh, uh, anyway, it just sounds cool that they're they're working yeah. on stuff. I don't really know anything about it besides what I hear from other people. I know the very basics, and this is about the very basics I would know. So, so that's a crash course in Age of Sigmar. 
the after all their announcements of like you know 40k stuff last God, week there were like five 40k articles in one age of sigmar article and then they're like oh yeah we did technically announce some stuff about uh, age of sigmar you might have missed it <laughs> During our convention. It's During like, our, our, our quote-unquote all our, our Warhammer event, but oops, it's just 40k. Oops, oops all 40k. It really sounded like it was oops all 40k. <laughs> but apparently it wasn't. And they had right. some sick part. So, uh, Magical Kittens RPG level up Kickstarter. Yeah. This is a thing that's happening. I yeah. love the art. <laughs> I will look at the art in just the, two the, seconds. Like, the trailer is like just a cat riding a dragon. Hell yeah. Can I be a dragon? Mm, that, that's can, a... Oh no. You can be a, a dragon in terms of that one kobold's cat who's apparently a dragon. Pathfinder. Mm. Yeah. Here, here's the, here's the uh, plot of, uh, of the game at a glance. You are magical kitties. You have humans. Humans have problems. Use your magical problem powers to solve the problems and save the day. That's it. <laughs> That's yeah. the plot of the game. I, I mean, I, I like it. Um, <laughs> I do, I do like this uh, this quote down here. What's that kitty doing? I want to be a kitty with wings. That's wholesome. It is a all ages RPG. It is. Uh huh. The perfect intro to role play. Oh, oh god. No. They also spelled crew with a K. Kitty crew. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, again, slightly mind flooded by this trailer. Uh, they have a the reprint of the deluxe edition of the game, a power up uh, source book featuring more powers and epic level adventures, Fantastica, a new hope town filled with fairy tales and magic, and a series of workbook pack, including our new hometown work pack and my four kitty workbooks to life. So, where is Eldritch Knight Kitty? <laughs> get their power from the Dark God Cthulhu? That's, I'm pretty sure that's just all cats. <laughs> oh, okay. Damien, do you get your power from the Dark God Cthulhu? She does not She does not confirm or deny this. Yeah, it's, it's against the, the code. <laughs> first, <laughs> first rule about kittyism is don't talk oh, about like... kittyism. Ah, oh, there we go, stream yeah. cat. Hell yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> she wasn't bothering. She's like, I'm asleep. Don't bother me. <laughs> Yeah, go away. Go away, puny mortal. <laughs> puny mortal, I shall smite you! Or bother oh. you by sitting upon your lap. Take that! Meow, 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 meow. So it's like a whole thing. It's got, like, little cat counters for something? Yeah, it looks, it looks neat. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, typing. Typing is Umber! <laughs> Umber is trying to sleep or not be Thank awake. You. Bah! <laughs> Umber was bah. awake when I woke up today. Oh, no. I did see a certain, <clears throat> uh, probably uh, that game where you shoot people happening. Mm. Yeah. <clears throat> yes. We did have siege. some of that. That's we did have some siege. <laughs> we didn't go that late, though. Umber may have played Final Fantasy all night. That is my guess. Ooh, or watched the Final Fantasy convention thing. I mean, I'll tell you what I did last night. Uh, after I played the game, uh, I basically sat around watching videos, and then I played Stellaris for like six hours, and then I went to bed. <laughs> I um, restarted my computer, and then went to lay in bed and then passed out again. Oh, uh, cool. At, like, you night. Wake up early. I, uh, finished some editing, and then... Fan fast. That was about it. Is bad. that the weird event they had going on? Yeah, they announced uh, Bunny Boys. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Apparently, Lindsay watched all of it. That's why she didn't join Siege. Yeah, she was the that. event was still going on when I woke up. Jeez. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Anyway, anything else we're going to talk about with these magical kitties? Things? Uh, well, the fun. Fantastica Hometown is apparently a very interesting uh, version of it because in that one you don't have to hide your magical powers from humans because oh. you're, cause rather than just helping humans out, you're helping solve princess problems <laughs> <laughs> in Fantastica. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the fairy tale land where kitties can visit any time and so help solve princess problems. Oh, more furry ladies, hell yeah. 
Uh, That's Final Fantasy news right there. Uh huh. Uh huh. More yeah, furry yeah. ladies. More. <laughs> uh, oh God. For Fifteen dollars, uh, you can get the basic. For, for one. Yeah. Is so, that just the rule book? Yeah, it's the you get the rule book. Uh, it's mostly it is digital, of course. Yeah, it's all the digital stuff. Um, and then forty five, you can get like the digital and physical stuff. Yeah, because yeah. there's like a whole thing. Mm hmm. Uh, digital, 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 digital. Um, they're super funded, by the way. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, funded. absolutely. They are, they were funded <laughs> in like 10 hours. Yeah, what is it like? You know what I think it is? Everyone is stuck inside, uh, and they have, they have the money. <laughs> so they're just going to be like, this sounds cool. It'll give me something to do yeah, while the I'm stuck the, inside. The trailer says funded in one and a half hours. Oh man, yep. Oh, Appar- that's, that seems to be apparently the forty-five dollar one has an alien invasion hometown plus digital map book. Hmm. <laughs> alien right. invasion. Is, is magical kitty stopping notes. an alien invasion? Um, <laughs> oh, and apparently Final Fantasy will have lion women in the future. Yeah, yep, there will yep. be lion women as well. More, ah, you know, or more furry ladies. Let's go. More mm-hmm. furry lady- ladies, apparently. Yeah. Uh. It is, it is the not bonkable day. <laughs> oh god, for 450 you can make your kitty magical. <laughs> no, you can't, because that's sold out. Aww. Oh, man. You can't, can't make your kitty magical. You can't be a magical sorry. cat, yeah. sorry. <laughs> it's sold out. But sorry, can you Damien. be a magical cat girl? Uh. No, that's my Final Fantasy That's Final Fantasy. Fantasy. <laughs> that's my Final Fantasy character. You leave her alone. Her husband's hmm. character. Her... Her husband is a Her husband's cat. in chat right now. Well, her husband was an elf who turned into a cat who may not be a cat anymore. I don't know. Still a cat dressed like a stripper. Oh, all right. Well, that's a thing that happened. <laughs> what? Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Uh, a deeper discussion? Yeah, a deeper discussion, I think, is correct. Because I <laughs> that statement just is fried my brain a little bit there on that one. This is why you have me on the show. That's to, factually correct, though. To, to keep the focus. <laughs> That's the thing, is, like, after you mentioned, I'm like, is that technically correct? And I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I'm not gonna share any... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Facts. Facts were stated in chat. Facts were stated in chat. And the fedora. <gasps> oh, he got the fedora now? Hell yeah. <laughs> I think it was really expensive. I would buy stuff in that, but I'm still newbie level, and I yeah, need to be baby. Yeah. Oof. I will. I will never be super high level because I refuse to pay for that game. <laughs> right. Oof. So deeper discussion. Deeper time. discussion. Yeah, we're, we're going to talk, talk about, about RPG lore. Now, lore takes two forms when I really talk about it. Um, there's the part of you build your own world. And in that case, you're building, that you're building your own set of lore. And the thing is, is this is technically two different discussions on one in a way. Because on that end, it's how deeply should you dive into your own lore that you're dealing with. On the other if hand... If you like, yeah. I can talk about that briefly before you move on. Yeah, let's talk about that first. Let's start with this, is building your own world and the lore of your world. Alright, so there's, there's two ways of going about this. There is the lazy way, which is what I did where basically you write the bare minimum you need to make the world function. And then you basically work with your players to flesh out the world. I kind of am a little bit um, in the write too much lore, and also in the camp of letting players flesh things out. Uh, by letting players flesh things out in your world, like what was your hometown? You know, what was it called? What was, where, where was it on the map? You know, like what was it like? You, you have much more connected players to your world as opposed to just, like, reading from a book, you know? Um, but there's also the... Uh, some Sometimes you don't need to write things. Yes. Uh, for example, like, my um, Pantheon. My Pantheon is super, super basic, and it's just there to, like, fill in, like, the checkbox. Like, yes, I have one. And unless people really want to start exploring that there's no reason for me as the world creator to flush this out the other continents that are on the map the players aren't there there's no need for me to write an entire background and history and story for them it's kind of 
extra work for me. And it comes down to what are you using a world you're building yourself for? Um, yeah. If you're bu you're build if you're building it for this game that you're playing, well, then you don't really need a lot. You know, you need as much as you need for that world, and you can call it a day. You know, you yeah. don't have to go deep into it. Um, I think a good example would be, which is a point in time I actually would have liked to have had him on, is Will. I've been in a couple of Will's games. He uses the same world a lot of times in his D&D games. So he has a ongoing world setting. I think people like uh, uh, Delric Scott does the same. Yeah. He, he like you know has a kind of like existing kind of world setting where everything's interconnected. Granted, I don't know. Does he use some pre-existing stuff and then work and then makes his own stuff? I can't remember. Um, I don't know. I mean, he might take things like from like a monster manual and then like, how does this creature fit into my world? And then rewrite it to better fit in his world. Okay. But so it's like there is that like need sometimes to build more on to your yeah. what you're doing, but it's then that entire idea sometimes of doing is like. What will I? What basics do I need? What more should I write? Because you can write tons of stuff about something, and half of it will never come up because exactly. the players don't like, get involved in it. Yep. <laughs> and then it's that's work that's gone to waste. Like again, if you're using this world in more than one campaign, it might show up. But I also feel like you could also expand upon it when you're getting to that. You know? Yeah, like I'll um I could chime in on that one. I'm technically using a very, very simplified slash basic version of a world someone else made and then published and sold called Atharis. It's dark, grim, dark things. I love it. I am probably gonna end up using that world for every game. Uh what the book gives me room to do is write my own stuff on top of all of it, which is what I've been doing. And I'm not fleshing much out unless players start asking about it. Because yeah. I don't want to do hours and hours of writing for someone never to ask about it. Well, yeah. I think that hints back into a little bit of the other side of lore, which is pre-existing lore. Mm -hmm. That there are worlds that have been built that you can use. Like, I, I can give a good example. Technically, three game, all three of the games on stream I'm running actually all four games I'm running right now have pre-existing lore. In the case of um, Records of Evil, I'm using Faerun and the Forgotten Realms lore. That's pretty easy to find out stuff on. I, I Google it. Now granted, I'm building a modern day version of that. So I'm really building my own version of that lore. It's sort of like add a thousand... Yeah, I'm extrapolating. Add a thousand years to this, this is what you're doing. This is what it's like. Which some crazy shit has come up in the lore here and there occasionally, and some funny things, I think, uh, which um, some of which I remember and some of which I don't. Mm -hmm. But it's the idea of, like, you're using a basis. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay. Uh, Vampire's a lot the same. That, that one's pretty easy because it's sort of like, I look up, is there anything going on in this city? What kind of set it is? And then it's just... That one's cheating because it's the actual real world. Isn't yeah. Vampire kind of, you can look at just the real world or also the books because the mm -hmm. books also have a little bit of lore in them? Yeah, the books have a little bit of lore. Technically what I use is, uh, I use a, there's, there's a Wikipedia for uh, World of Darkness lore. Like, mm. it's, it's a good cheat if you don't want to go to too in-depth. Uh, the good thing about that wiki is it does reference the books you can find the information in. So if you do want to really dive in deep, I can look up the books. I, I have a, like, a, I got in a collection of, a, like, a bunch of the PDFs, the, only the older ones, years ago, from a friend of mine. Um, and so I can access, like, 95% of the books that are mentioned there, and I can be like, if I want to look into it more, I can. If I don't, I can stick with what's on the Wikipedia. And it's relatively simple. It's the basics. It's, it works fine 95% of the time. And then it's just... What's in this city in this part of the world? <laughs> There's a <laughs> lot of that. Like, yeah. Uh, Galarian's a pretty established world for Pathfinder. They've done a good yeah. job of establishing that. Like, it, I can cheat so much with using Ustalov. Like, uh, <laughs> I, I don't have to do it. 
then you got things like uh, Dominaria for the for, for Thursday, and that's one of those ones that's a little harder because the lore is Magic cobbled the together. Gathering. Yeah, the lore is cobbled together from a couple of books and card quotes. <laughs> it's so weird. I honestly, <laughs> I don't know how you turned that like a playing card game into like an actual living, breathing world. I thought that was really cool. Well, the that's thing why is, I try and watch. It's there is a basic of information. It's like. Uh, mm -hmm. when they were in the, like, I, I can't remember the name of it, the Highlands, where I put a uh, Carrie's Village. Yeah. From from a bunch of cards and other sources, like, they, they, they again, they have a nice online Wikipedia. They had about, like, a couple of sentences of information on that place. So I was able to use that, and then I combined it with some other information I knew, like, from, like, from one of the, I took one of the cards that was based on that area, and the card had a very like just the way it was like described or something made me think Scotsman. Like it, it was, it was like just never mentioned. It was never like, it was just kind of like a little bit like a weird, like it's the Highlands, you know? So then I made it there kind of, be one. I just made it that the entire area was basically Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, really cool though. Nice. Yeah. But it was sort of like, there was this little bit of information on like the one card that mentioned the location and then some of the like, books and stuff had the older books mentioned some stuff that happened that location to get a couple of sentences you know it, it wasn't a lot but you could take it and you could build off of it and i think that kind of comes down to a little bit of like some real world knowledge and like using knowledge i've had from other game worlds for building that one yeah. there but the, uh the book i have open is a pre-written setting Mm -hmm. It's basically Earth in the future, but uh, there's a bunch of things that changed, right? I don't, I don't yeah. remember exactly everything. Uh, it's been a while since I read the book. And I'm really considering running a short little game in it for two of my friends, just because I have a, a really big itch for Cyberpunk. Mm -hmm. And I'll probably try and sass Momo into running something mm. in it as well. Um, that never happened. <laughs> uh oh, my phone just chirped. It's in my phone. <laughs> oh, I don't know where. Oh no. Um, <clears throat> so I, I'm kind of excited to do that. It only has lore for one city, but it kind of like gives you enough Ooh. to like figure out how you would do anything else on your own. Um, so like, mm. if I was running that game, I'd probably just use the city that it gives you the location, and it probably has a little short adventure in here, and I'll probably just run that. It's probably longer than a one-shot, mm -hmm. and obviously if my players decide to go off the beaten path, it'll obviously be longer than two <laughs> or three games, which I 100% guarantee that they will do that, at least to a small degree. Um, and it's going to be really easy for me, because I, I don't think I can run more than two uh, sandbox custom games, just honestly. Yeah. yeah. Fair. Well, I think, like, if you take, like, worlds that give you a good basis, but tend not to go into a lot of detail for most places Shadowrun you know yeah like you can get a basic idea on a lot of cities but only like a select few actually have a lot of details and those are like Seattle because that's the main city um, yeah there's a couple in Shadowrun that like city wise or at least area wise have a lot more lore than you'd expect um, Most but of them it's... come from like pre-made adventures. <laughs> well, yeah, they're they're either they're pre-made adventures or they're like history lore. Like, um, uh, Fist. Fist is a big cyberpunk fan. Like the the, the official one, not like the setting. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's like this one city that uh, I don't know if it was nuked or or if it was just like super isolated. But basically, it's like no one ever like goes there and comes back or no one ever leaves from that area and it's just like this dark spot of like anti-information Chicago is that what it is yes because I in thought it was somewhere in Arizona uh there might be another one but Chicago was like that because a uh, portion of the city was infested by insect spirits oh yeah the insect spirits that's a thing too yeah they're like the harbingers of the horrors because that's yeah, technically the... the world same world setting even though now they're different companies they used to be the same company because <laughs> that's like that's why uh I, I guess spoilers for Shadowrun lore 
Um, but it's uh, the, the magic has always been a thing. But there's creatures that come and like cus- consume all the magic and destroy all life as you know it. Yeah. And so the Earth has been destroyed several times, and the current Shadow Punk or Shadow Shadow Run uh, world is like the third or fifth world. Sixth world. Sixth world. Okay. There fifth you go. world is the kind of life we knew we know about, but technically would have been like nineties, eighties. That kind of would yeah. be the end of the fifth world. Um, so magic has returned, and yes. it's now the like the sixth return of magic or something. It's not quite the same because I think like the first world, because I think Earth Dawn's supposed to be like the second world or something <laughs> technically, and that's there, that's a lot right of after the horrors have happened when the dwarves okay. basically made underground cities and hid everybody down there. Yeah, yeah, they're like, hey, other species, we live where horrors can't get to it. Want to join us? And they're like, yes. <laughs> yeah. So there's actually a lot of, of uh, lore for Shadowrun, if you dig. Yeah. and like it, it, A lot of it's old lore. Yeah, a lot of it's old lore. Unfortunately, they don't take as much of that lore in the new stuff. But still, there's plenty of it that's still technically legal. Some of it that's a little on that weird edge, like the Earth Dawn connections are kind of like... You could take them or leave them at this point in time. Because they're different companies but, at this point. But, like, for, for current modern day, like, how is Chicago? How is Seattle? You know, how is, how is New York? Like, you're, you're going to have, like, all the big hotspot areas. But, like, if you're, like, I don't know, in Wyoming, there's probably nothing in Wyoming. <laughs> probably, yeah. You would be in one of the Native American nations as they are now, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what kind of set settlement would be there in Wyoming. Gotta be yeah, honest. I mean, I lived in Wyoming for like ten years, uh, but it's like, why would anybody write about it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's know. the thing is, like, I can see like someone putting together like, uh, a, a, like, like the, well, the best way to look into it is like, look up that Native American nation, which one Wyoming would be in, and then just Google that and get to like the 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 Wikipedia, which would either yeah. give you the basic information or mention what book you could look up that nation yeah. in, and just be like, Wyoming's part of that. This is what yeah, happens Yeah, you'd, you'd there. have to ex- extrapolate a little bit, <laughs> yeah. but you you could. There's enough stuff there you could you could kind of make your own thing. Like I I know enough about that town to know what it would be like in a, a Shadowrun setting. To be honest, uh, but honestly speaking, it wouldn't be that much different, really, because um, the the towns really aren't that big. Yeah, like uh, another example of of this I could use because I am. Um looking into doing some fallout shenanigans with the 2d20 system um there is like no information in anything in fallout uh, in, in pennsylvania aside from pittsburgh i know enough about pennsylvania i can make a bunch of shit up mm-hmm. so i could very easily make up a bunch of things that are canon friendly to fallout in run of a, a 2d20 fallout game event. you don't you don't want to use the pit again <laughs> i could use the pit but it would be like <laughs> after the the raiders were all overthrown yeah it's i'd love the pittsburgh's name was the pit it's just so it's the, <laughs> yeah you know? it's fair and yeah, my favorite thing is is uh they re- there are people in that dlc that refer to themselves as as stealers and it is infuriating because <laughs> i fucking live here <laughs> Pittsburgh Steelers football. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Yeah, I hate um, that. <laughs> you you know what's interesting though. Speaking of Fallout, is because it's I mean it it's alt history sort of right. Yeah. Uh, the way technology changed, uh, like split like a timeline, somewhere in the forties, like after the atomic bomb. Um, it was like, directly after World War Two. There was the diver- divergence happened then. Yeah, because basically they they didn't invent the microprocessor. I think is what it was. I believe that's part of it. Uh, and they relied more on nuclear power. Yeah. yeah, they they didn't they didn't fear nuclear power like what happened in our world. Yeah, um, so that's where the technology behind this. But the neat thing about Fallout is you could basically just go and use Google Maps for the yeah. most part. Yeah, because um, the world hasn't changed that much in the uh, last there's, sixty years. There's like a few changes I could think of. But, like, they're so minor, it wouldn't matter. Yeah. I mean, look at a city, right? I mean, first of all, any city you take a screenshot of, consider it ruins. This is all yeah. ruins. There's also but a chance have... that it could have possibly nuked. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it could be a crater. Mm -hmm. So you could just literally draw a black circle over part of the city and be like, this is wasteland. Yep. Yeah. Because that's where a new kit and just destroyed everything. Very, very easy to do that. Yep. Yeah. And then the rest is like, um, this is ruins. This is where people live. Yeah. This is where people may have resettled now after a couple hundred years. Yeah. Maybe you could easily as well just pin a few places on the map. <laughs> All right, here's where maybe some vaults were. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Fallout's an interesting setting. Um, I like it. Yeah. I, I think when it comes down to for very interesting settings, like. Uh, well, like, it's like. I, I think the, the two examples I was thinking of is the first one would be like a good example of like taking something pre existing and running with it in an insane way. In Records of Evil, Os. The continent of Os has so little information about it other than you know it's fantasy Australia. Uh, I was thinking that you're talking about fantasy Australia here? Yeah. <laughs> That's all you know about it, really. The way they the, the basic description that's given anywhere because there's mysterious group of uh, shamanic people that go on walkabouts across the world. <laughs> <laughs> so they end up. Some uh, of them have ended up in Faerun. That's how people know about Os at all. Is because a few of them have ended up in Faerun on their walkabouts. I really did enjoy literal kaiju existing in uh, fantasy Australia. I mean. Yeah. That, that was something I wanted to add. I mean, like, I kept adding, like, weird, weirder stuff, I feel like. The dire platypus has the to be... The platypus just kept getting weirder and weirder. I just I just added stuff to it to make it weird. I was like, sure, this is what the platypus does sure, also. it spits up some horrible, weird vomit. Also, it spits up lightning. <laughs> also, it breathes yeah. fire. Also, yeah, I it's think poisonous. I, I think I commented that it breathes fire in chat, and Janice was like, it also breathes fire, and I'm like, yes! <laughs> So it's like a tiger, uh, dragon, uh, otter or something. I don't know. I don't know. But it's also got like <laughs> horns that shoot electricity and it like secretes like basically stuff like the aliens or like insects do. <laughs> like secretes stuff to make nests. <laughs> God. Ugh. Yeah, it's just a horrible <laughs> abomination. Like an actual platypus. Or the Dunsparce <laughs> in Pokemon. And Which is course, a platypus. You had to have one. <laughs> it's it's the platypus of the Pokemon world. Fuck you, yep. Dutch hearts. <laughs> <laughs> but no, um, that's an example of like I I could just run with whatever the hell I wanted, and like you know that was that was fun making up a lot of stuff. If you sit down and look at that shit, I don't think it really works very well. <laughs> like analyzing, no. not, but like. Oh, and you're also not doing a mega long campaign cares? in that world. Yeah. We yeah. were there for like four sessions. <laughs> yeah, that was the thing is we were there for four sessions and it's the back end of the adventures anyway. So it's like I don't need to like go into detail about what is Os. It's uh, just a place of craziness and chaos and lots like, of magic. Just in like Australia. Yeah. Exactly like Australia, but with magic. Well, it's, yeah. it's like I think another one that is my own original world is the one that's in was in the Madness of the Land, which I'm hoping to reuse at some point in time here. Um, but the you call it the Lands of Madness. Yeah, that that's that's an entirely different thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's different. That's but my like, game. The world people came from. I have like this really basic idea about what the world was. I didn't go into detail about it. Because it was never really needed. It, yeah, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it, it was like I can describe it. Pangea-like continent. Uh, section of it uh, walled off where all the orcs, goblinoids, all those kind of races that are tend to be violent and chaotic, evil, were driven to and locked away. Then evil person takes over them and uh, uh, rages a, like, hundred-year war on the rest of the continent, uh, basically committing genocide. As one does. Uh, basically committing genocide wherever they went and driving uh, all the other races to near extinction, but also to their own army, too. Uh, so when you come down to that final battle at the beginning of the adventure, it's what's left of the goblinoid army, which isn't a lot, versus what's left of humanity, which is still outnumbered. Humanity in there and the other intelligent races, but anyway, yeah, good times. <laughs> I'm having like some casual genocide. <laughs> I mean, 
Hmm. Take that with a grain of salt. I'm mean, making a joke. It's, it's, it was. It certainly kind of was. I am like I never specifically ever called it in the game's genocide, but I'm like, yeah, no one shows up from the areas they go to. Yeah. <laughs> yep. No one returns from them. Hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. They take over areas, and no one comes out of those areas. It's really, honestly, it's better to not describe that because there, there's two really bad things that can happen and and one of them is is really bad and i'm not even going to describe it on stream and the other one is is just normal bad but it's still pretty bad yeah i think normal bad would just be they're killing everybody yeah 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 and the other one is the one where i'm like that probably happens but i would never ever describe it yeah. ever. I, I would stick with the just describe. killing thing that's yeah. the kind yeah. of that's everyone's the level dead there yeah everyone's <laughs> dead they just killed everybody mm -hmm. yep just killed and that's it. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> uh, sometimes we might get people that might want to dive depth into that, and I'm like a no, no on that oh. one. Just no, a no. That's bad. Stop uh, it. Yeah. yeah, please cease. But yeah, uh, world building. Um, if it's if it's your own custom game, for the most part, you only need what you think the players are gonna want or yeah. or um, like need, right? Yeah, and and again, like since we're really hitting on the lore section of things, it's, like, rather than just, like... We're, we're, we're not talking about world-building at this point in time. We're talking about, like, this is what people need to know about this thing. Like, yeah. it, it, in in Lightning's world, if I would go up and, like, ask about a god of, like, the Kitsune, that would be kind of lore about it, you know? Yeah. How that god works, that's that's a world-building, which I think is another discussion. Yeah, yeah. Right. There, there is a little um, bit of separation. Like... I, I guess for for the setting I, I'm using, there's only like three or four very detailed events, and then the rest is left vague or fill in blanks here. Mm -hmm. Like, um, like elf magic. The elf magic thing. I that's half fully established, half I filled in a lot of blanks. Uh, the dark ball, which is where there was some horrible event in necrotic energy came up from the earth and blotted out the sun over this country. That's really detailed. Um, I, don't, I don't think any of us know about that. That old chestnut. You all live, like most of the party lived through it. Um, uh, well, how recent was it? Uh, 30 years ago. Oh, then I most, probably most was around party from before. Has, has no... Your character is interesting because your character knows what the world was like before the gods all died. Yeah, my character is pretty old, but they're just like a, they're not even that old. They're they're just an elf. Yeah. <laughs> um, the other big established event is in the book. I'm pretty sure they call it the God Wars, which is a dumb name, and I kind of love it. Yeah, uh, it's, where, it's too easy of a name. It's where the gods fought against horrible beings from I think the far realms lost, retreated, what was left fought each other for remaining straps of power, and they all died. Mm. Sucks for them. Sounds uh, about right. Then led to a lot of bad things because the plane is now godless, and there's nothing to keep evil back. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna so... try and work on that. Yeah. Or horrible I'm, I'm abominations. One, one person who probably actually gives a shit about the world. Oh my god. Yeah. Um so yeah. That thing. Um but I I kind of if I'm going to use a a world in in a game and in a game I want to craft to my own, I kind of like it when they leave things vague so I can build off of that. Yeah. But if I would yeah. do it would be hard to do that with the Sword Coast. We are like Definitely. Thousands yeah. of years of established lore. Yeah, we, in that world. yeah. Like there's... you either have to go super early and and then be by, bypass all the lore, but there's still lore for yeah. that. That's the Netherese Empire. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like again, like and, and like, not necessarily ignoring lore, but like working off of it. That can be good too. It's just that sometimes that's not always easy to do. I think is what the problem can be. Like you can be attempting to like. <clears throat> you got to figure out how your version of lore works in the version of lore that's established, and that's a mixed bag sometimes, especially if yeah. there's... Especially because you... Sometimes you might have a character, or player, I mean, who's a fan of yes. that lore. Yep. 
I, like, I was thinking that, but I didn't want to interrupt you. <laughs> like, I gotta be honest, I'm a big fan of uh, Vampire the Masquerades, or, or the World of Darkness's lore. Granted, I really hate 5th edition lore to a degree. Some fair. of it works, some of it doesn't. From what I've heard, fair. Yeah. Mixed bag on how much I like that or don't. And so that's why I'm like, for that one at least, it's gotten me that I'm at a point where I understand flexibility when it comes to this stuff. You know, there is a a certain flexibility you kind of have to have almost. Yeah. And sometimes that flexibility works better than others. Sometimes it doesn't. The the one thing, if you're exclusively talking about Faerun, is uh, Faerun has a ton of lore. Um, yeah. And as Momo was saying, a lot of it is like Sword Coast related because people like the Neverwinter City and Luskin mm-hmm. and stuff. Yeah, like, if, um, well, if you would run a Neverwinter game, you would have <laughs> nothing. But <laughs> if there. you move away from that... Mm-hmm you have like major events like hey this happened in blah 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 dr uh for example i think the um what is it the uh fairy which are the sun elves that made a pact with the demons or whatever uh apparently there's a set time that they like invade the world i don't remember what exactly happens to them but i'm pretty sure it's like at this time they like came out of their um because they were like in a magical stasis or something and then that, that timer ran out, and so they, like, invaded because they were, like, really mad about things. Um, but, like, there there's certain key major events. But if you're just like, hey, I really like the town of, I don't know, High Moon or whatever, right? You just look at the timeline and go, okay, when are all the big major events? And if you just want to use that world for all the pre-established lore, just pick a time between big major events yeah. and call it good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all you have to do. Like, if, uh, and you can avoid events. And I mean, like, even, like, historically, you can have those. Or you can kind of, like, just take... I think they have a current timeline, kind of, in published books. So you can kind of get an idea of, like, what the current day of Faerun is now. I, I don't know. The, the timeline weirds me out. And so, like, normally I... I'm not really as beholden to the timeline. I normally I'm just like, well, you know, that it's time at some point in time. Wibbly yeah. wobbly, wimmy <clears throat> wimmy. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, wibbly wobbly, definitely. Um, uh, enough that I'm more like, especially for me when it comes to like actually using Faerun lore, I, I, I'm much more of like a preference of like maybe you're at small town McGee, which there's not a lot about. Yeah, that, maybe Fair, that's where you're yeah. hanging out. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll I'll use it again. Neverwinter as a setting, you're gonna have a lot of stuff because like a lot of things were set there. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Many things happened there, but I don't know how much uh, water deep lore there is. Oh, there's a or... lot of water deep lore. I, I can imagine. Okay, water deep, Neverwinter, and Boulder's Gate all. Yeah, those have... are like the three big ones. Yeah, huge amount. Yep. I think a good example of how to use uh, Waterdeep well, wasn't done by me, and it was a game that I was in. And I think in Waterdeep, there is a Temple of Umberly in it. Okay. Um, it, it, in the one game where we went against, like, the Fur- four Fury gods, and because they were all trying to bring about apocalypses, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, usually, you know, Umberly wanted to flood the world, and... I did one of them wanted to, does. yeah. One of them wanted to turn everybody into beasts. The other wanted to freeze the world, and one wanted to like you know, uh, just, Malar. Malar wanted to turn everybody beasts. Uh, whoever has the ring of whoever created the ring of winter wants everybody wanted to freeze the world, and I think like the I the evil storm god wanted to like just destroy everything with storms, so everything was reduced to rubble. You know the usual thing, apocalypses. Anyway, yeah, yeah. anyway, uh, I do not think there is a giant secret underground thing in that temple. Probably not. Our DM added it. <clears throat> so that wasn't difficult yeah. to do. I mean, got to be honest on that one. The, like you know, you can add in lore where there is holes in it. You know, it's like there's a temple here. Here's some basic information about that temple. Oh, hey now, now that temple is uh, also got secret underground area where you know the the giant super kraken uh, wizard. Was the Cargo King? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> Close enough name. Um, Slarthakel. 
Mm. Um, who, who technically he's a wizard, but we changed it to a sorcerer because who? When the fuck does a giant crack get a spell book? Uh, when they summon it with their dark powers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but it's like it's a tiny spell book for this massive kraken. <laughs> Look, he, he, he turned into a twentieth level sorcerer instead of a twentieth level wizard. <laughs> That's also a kraken and a chosen of Umberley. And not old chestnut. This one does. I, also, also, hey, now you're a rock star. I, also, like, older edition Krakens that were, like, really powerful. Uh, anyway, but regardless, you know, there was there was a storyline to be added there, and I think that's another kind of way you can look at things, is just because, like, favor, uh, just because the Sword Coast has a lot of stuff doesn't mean you couldn't add something in here or there. There's room for it. You just have to be smart about that room if you want to use it. You know, and especially if you are purposely picking a timeline where not a lot of major events happened. Yeah. Again, you could also play up with those timelines. Maybe you yeah, want to be in that major event. Maybe you start with freaking invasion of some like Luskin tribe or whatever, and it's like this is how the, the game starts. Deal with it. You know. Yep. <sighs> it's not. Using pre-established lore isn't bad, especially if it's what you want to run, because then you already have all this um, ammo to use. Yeah, I guess. that's one of the reasons that I've been that like I think I was pretty easily able to run as many games as I've been able to run. Pre-existing lore helps me a lot. I don't have to make my own. Like, yeah. if I was going to run a campaign, I think I could run maybe one or two heavy lore that I'm designing myself campaigns. After that, I just... It's hard to do that. Yeah, I mean, I use me, for example, right? I have... I'm running a game that's in my custom world, and I'm, like, constantly trying to make sure that I'm not derping and forgetting certain things. Uh, I don't know if I could run a second game in my world. I just don't... And unless it was, like, in the very <laughs> similar area. Because yeah. there's technically two vastly different cultures um, in, in the planet. And, and one of them is they are a very... Um, I, it's just the monster races, right? Like, dra dragons took over this one area. Uh, dragons and giants are like the, the two big ones in charge. And then there's um, demonic descendants. They kind of became... the They were like demons that were trapped, like demons and devils or whatever, that were trapped on the world when something happened. Um, and so they are over in that area because it's like, oh, you're evil creatures or whatever. But they're kind of their own separate, like, city-state. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're part of that nation, but, like, separate. Um, and then there's, like, the traditional, like, humans and elves and, and dwarfs and all that. And they are very, very different culturally and um, technologically. And so I can shift the dynamic um, of how I want, like, how much magic or how much technology. And then there's also... Like, for lack of a better term, using the Star Trek example, is there's a quote-unquote neutral zone that's kind of in between the two nations where you can have both things. You can have everything in there, um, and you can run a more traditional D&D &D kind of game because it's less civilized there, and you'll have more like, these people are different, let's kill them. And I mean, like, like you know, goblins, cobalt. It's not like, <laughs> these people are a different color than us. That's bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Or, I think that just come, comes down to something like, um, not to dive too deep into it, but like, Will's game that I was talking about, his world, I do find some interesting things about it, where he's like, he, it's an elf-based society. Like, elves have kind of ruled the world, humans are there, but they're a lot more like, they're still, like, slowly becoming more civilized, they were kind of behind, even like on that normal D, D level of technology so there's still a lot of like tribal humans out there and then you've got dwarves who are more advanced but they've been isolationists for generations okay. because the islands that they come from the surface of the islands suck to live on <laughs> think of like it's like monster island you know it's like awful and then so it's like the dwarves <laughs> just you know the dwarves oh, so they they were just playing Ark, Survival Evolved, or whatever. Yeah, they're just like, they're like, well, uh, you know, we live down here in the underground where we're safe from all the horrible things. Oh, we want to leave. Ugh. And then apparently, and then like, cool and then the orcs are even need or too, because, like, they technically stole some technology from the dwarfs, but they refined it in interesting ways, because they stole, like, guns. 
but oh, no. because orcs are warlike, they basically have become the wild west around where they're at. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. So, like, they stole this the, the basic idea of the technology and ran with it until it's like, it's the Wild West now for them. That's neat that's cool. idea. Yeah, you know, that, that's like an interesting idea. And I think, like, there's, it's just, when you develop a world sometimes, that's kind of neat. Now, granted, I think Will's trying to develop his world a lot more because he technically is part of a game company and, you know, maybe I'll not the could, show. He could publish it. He <laughs> could publish it if he wanted to, as part of the game company, which he is the partial owner of. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's another thing um, to, to touch on, like really, really briefly, is um, build, building your own world to tell a certain story. If if like you are a decent enough writer and you have enough good ideas, uh, and you're like, I really want to tell this type of story, you can just build a world for it, and it can only be existing in, in the nature of like I want to tell this story. If you are trying to, like, build an entire world to, like, sell, you have to do it differently. Yeah. And, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, like, this might be cynical sounding, um, but usually if you're trying to build a world to sell it, you're not really building a great world. You're trying to sell a product, and I think you kind of have to uh, not really take shortcuts, but you have to build in a way that appeals to a wider audience and therefore it could hurt your actual like idea of world building. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. It, it's an entirely different thing. Like you could easily build a world that you could run any of your adventures in. Like, you know, again, like I've given examples of people like, I, I think like, you know, y- you build a big world and you run like maybe three, four, five campaigns in it over like a decade. That's the world you built. Your, your existing pre-existing lore, you know, and that you can keep using and things like that. That's fine, too. That you're probably going to come up with a lot more lore than, let's say, my one-time world, which, uh, you know, like, I could be like, this is totally Feyrude. Do they ever show up in a place that's important in Feyrude? No. They're in small <laughs> towns that, like, are boondocks towns in the middle of the map, and that's all your adventures that ever are. Mm-hmm. I can lie and say it's Feyrude, and it could be called anything for, for all that matters. But, you know, I think it's just, it's good to have some kind of backstory to things, some kind of lore to all your worlds, to, some, yeah. to, to the existences you have. But what form that takes and how much it you have, I think that's not always an easy thing to figure out. Um, hey, do you I, want to talk about our weekend tabletop? I think what we wanted to talk about, though, was our side thing we talked about earlier. Players. Yes, oh, yeah, but yeah. that's part of it. Okay, then let's talk about our week in tabletop a little bit. Uh, I guess we have to start with my game, because it's... Con- yeah. We, do, yeah, we, we do. do try to go chronologically. Yeah. Uh, man, okay, so... <laughs> part of the thing we were going to talk about is... What I was thinking is we talk about the number of players in each of our games as we talk about them. So I'm running with... Five players, I five think. Five players now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we were down one. Uh, and uh, Tantus, I'm just going to be honest with you, y- you were like half there, which is fine. I I, I, I think I was like tired last week for what? Yeah, reason. you 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 might have fallen asleep at one point. You you <laughs> were did, out of it, which is fine. I did think I dozed off for like funny. five minutes in the middle of it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, Very there was some time. And for Tan to feel like, wait, what happened? Well, what are we are doing we here? Why are we here now? <laughs> Actually, I'm um, sitting in the chair and I was like... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we were down one player, which is fine, because um, I, I'm, I've i built the story to allow for if people can't be there. Because, like, we were down... Um, we were we were three? Three or four players initially? We... We're missing Plex. Uh, but I mean, we had, before we had Plex, when we first started it, the game, it we was initially we were, three players. Initially, we were three. Then Umber came in, which was four. No, yeah. no, Plex was first. Was Plex was okay? Then Plex, Plex was first because Plex we Umber. got from the. Right. Well, the thing is, we always talked about Umber. Umber was originally going to be part of it. It was originally going to be the yeah. four of us. Uh, Umber right. missed like the first three <clears throat> games. Right. Plex so, was pretty recent. Yeah, but Plex we, showed up during Fish Cave Adventure, which was like the second session 
Second yeah. Iceberg. Oh, that's right. Plex did come in before Umber because yes. Umber appeared when you guys went to the hot springs. Yes. Yeah. Now Umber was supposed to be there from the beginning. It's just that he had yeah. the, the things were going on and he wasn't making a yeah. character, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, et cetera. It wasn't, wasn't feeling great and <laughs> character wasn't done yet. Uh, so we were down um, Plex, who was Roval, who was the druid, and uh, what happened the previous session is they got arrested. Um, and so they weren't there. It, it, it like they had, they had school finals, right? So it's like I can't make it. I have finals. Cool, that's fine. Uh, I I am okay with running that game easily down by one player. Uh, if two players are missing, I could probably still run it, but I'd keep things a lot lower key. Um, and so you guys were uh, basically just doing a lot of like errands. Uh, mm -hmm. You were getting things together because you want to go and blow up some cobalts. So you were trying to run around and get. Uh, basically ingredients to make black powder because you're going to turn them into bombs <laughs> and you're going you're gonna, to like B-52 this fucking mm -hmm. cobalt. <laughs> like... See, I, guess, See, my I guess that's the plan. My plan needed yeah. Roval because I also wanted to poison them, but Roval's like the person that would know. He's the druid. He would know about the wild to be like, these are the poisons you, you want to use to murder you, you people. Know, you... You also have a monk who knows about the wild. Yeah, a monk is so literally an monk. alchemist. Yep. I guess yep, I, they have, I keep they forgetting have the monk's good. also an alchemist. To be fair, though, the monk's got some shit going on. Yes. Yeah. Or a little, little distracted. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to talk about the DM side of things, then Momo and Tanta, so you guys can talk about player side of things. But um, you also... Um, talked with a gnome who recently uh, came to the island and they're trying to build smaller airships. Um, and I, I, if you want me to go full breaking the meta, I will. Um, uh, but they, they be like, hey, airships take a long time to build and are really big and obviously big targets. You know, we had that big, huge war thing. We lost a lot of airships. There's not a whole lot of them left. But the way we build them is we basically take an existing boat because people know how to build boats and they build them efficiently and then we just convert it to be an airship. So like technically if you own an airship, you also own a regular boat. You know, they, they still work. They probably have less crew capacity um, because, you know, they got big huge magical engines in them. Mm -hmm. But effectively it's still a boat. And so you went to go get some bamboo because they wanted to, they needed something strong and like flexible or whatever to like build some stuff mm -hmm. um and you're also gonna burn some of the the bamboo to make charcoal so that you can either sell the extra to the blacksmith but also you wanted to have some for your crazy gunpowder uh x x thing uh, and and the gnome is gonna create all the gunpowder for you mm -hmm. yeah uh, but there was a bunch of player things that happened too so. yeah um player things did happen uh kilmer experienced the joys of flying for the <gasps> first right. time with some anime boots <laughs> yes uh they were very loud and um uh, not at all um jet engine-y or prop airplane-y they yeah. were they were magical engines they were yeah. magic. Mm -hmm. and they just happened to sound like I don't know, uh, World War II uh, <laughs> Zero or something. I don't know. P pick your airplane. Maybe, maybe a P-51 Mustang with the Merlin engine. Yeah. That's just an, that's a good sound. Yeah. Um, I forget what Marty did. One on a Marty Dranther. had a date. Mar oh, yeah, Marty had a date. Dranther mm -hmm. went fishing and then was sad. Mm, yeah, so that's what? right. Uh, Viren? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dranther was just fishing the entire time. We had a conversation. conversation. Alone time. Yeah, it was a secret conversation. Made, it made Dranthier sad. Um, you you have what, some was other was Dranthier? Uh, what what's the proper word? Um, not dropped. Uh, dumped. Dumped by his uh, Kitsune girlfriend. Yeah, that's what happened. I'm sorry. <laughs> sure, why not? <laughs> yeah, they're not the definitely. Girlfriend. Uh, they denied definitely. everything. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my yeah. character woke up with some wings. And another tail. Another tail and, and magically gained uh, divine magic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Totally normal. Uh, normal things that happen to everyone, right? Um, <laughs> yeah, it happens to everybody. You yeah, just wake up in a different body with magical abilities. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. It's nothing weird. Um, <laughs> so yeah, 
Viren is having a, a rough time uh, mm -hmm. of it right now. Mostly confused. Mm -hmm. um, Marty's and... not a help in that one. No. no. Marty's... Marty's jealous of certain things. Marty's... <laughs> oh, look, that jealousy was for a good, like, three seconds, and then it was like, fine, whatever. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Marty is, has been the most helpful, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, and also... Uh, anytime it's brought up near one of the NPCs, she's thus far been like, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, which NPC? I. Every time it's been brought up, she's like, no, we're not talking about it. What are you not talking about? Uh, the fact that uh, Roland became a, a lady. Ah! Uh, um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> that was the thing that happened last session. Yeah. Um, a lot of stuff happened. Well, it was a lot of things. It was also like a chill downtime session. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're we're missing our uh, crazy druid. Um, yeah. Thankfully, he was in prison, so Steve is so far Steve hopefully unharmed. Yeah. M Marty Marty was distracted by things. Uh, Dranthir mostly did their own thing. So, yeah. so mostly it was it was a Kelmer and Roland episode with a little bit of Marty sprinkled in. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yep. Which. Which was fine, right? This is going back to the the amount of players, right? Mm -hmm. uh, technically, it's six, but we really had like two and a half, and <laughs> five for two and a half. So well, do we have six? There was four people in the call, and one of them, uh, I think, I think Umber left after a bit because they weren't feeling good. Umber, no, yeah, Umber like joined for a little bit to I think listen and then joined to actually play. Like in the last hour. Yeah, yeah, in the very last part, because you guys went to talk with the trade lady yeah. um, to try and uh, negotiate for more, like, um, but, sulfur and saltpeter uh, or whatever. Stuff for boob. Yeah, making bombs. Yep. <laughs> uh -huh. Making gunpowder, specifically. Yes. Um, and I, I wanted Umber to be there for some reason. Oh, because you met the hunter, the big yeah. game hunter man. Um, uh, yeah. Durst, Durston. Yeah. Yeah. Not Every at all related has, to anybody Every else. The game has one. Yeah. 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 The numbers in at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's right. You met you met Durston because I, I should, forgot to have him introduced last I should time. Should totally have this cause... man named Durston and show up in Vampire. <laughs> You should, you should do it. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I, I am sometimes terrible because I forget. Like, I'll have notes about what I want to do, <laughs> and I'll have ideas of what I want to do. And the ideas I'll forget in the interaction with between my players and the world. I, I will forget things, which is why I need to take better notes. Yeah. Um, but I will never because bleh. Notes. Um, so yeah, we, we ran with... Uh, a lot less players, uh, e either tired, not there, um, or or whatever. But overall, it still was fine. You got a you got a lot done, right? I think it was yeah. like yeah. four days, four or five days yeah. worth of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, and we got stuff done. We took a small vacation. Yeah. Um, I think my next game is Monday with records. We did. You have didn't that. have the Sunday game. No, uh, we didn't have the Sunday game. We're having it this week. We were off last week. Mm. Mm. Um, but in records, uh, you found some people from the bloodline that you need to have, like, uh, a female member of that bloodline will, uh, willingly have, uh, relationships with a deity. Mm. Yeah, they gotta have Satan's baby. Yeah, they have to be yeah. willing to have Satan's baby, too. So, yep. now, now the thing is, they have, they had a couple of options, and they're going, the, the, one of the routes they're going for is, we're gonna take this drug addict, get them off the drugs, and then see, post that... Because they're probably still psychologically compromised, and we convince them to her to have Satan's baby. Yeah, yeah. But what about the amount of players in that game? We, we had, we had, we for the longest time we had three, and there was there we would never be able to play if we were down because two yep. was just not enough, unfortunately. And then we went up to four, and now we're sort of down to three again. So it's just been. That game has had issues in players the entire time. Mm -hmm. It's a weird yeah. thing that, like, I also have to say, Vampire had an issue with players. Because... Vampire's a bigger cast, too, I think. Yeah, now it is. A big, big cast of Vampire. We now. started at four. Mm -hmm. We lost one. We gained 
another one in Umber. Then we kind of lost uh, Dunce because he was he was living for a while in an area that didn't have internet. Yeah. Then we lost Umber. Then we gained Worm. Yeah. So we can keep playing. Then we were three for a long time, and now we've gained back Umber and Dunce. So we're up to five or five. Yeah, I I remember that when you were down for three because um I. Was at one point going to join, but work didn't permit it. It was unfortunate yeah. that, like, yeah, very unfortunate. I think I would, I would have liked to have been in that. But hey, life. Um. But yeah, now you got everyone back now. I mean, it's a big cast now. It's a big cast. Well, we're kind of down to four right now, and, and hopefully, yeah. Jess will be back for the finale. But uh, hopefully. you know, it's been. It's been a thing getting her back into it. Yeah. Because, like, she's just been through a lot, and now it's, like, just getting back into games has been <coughs> difficult. I can understand that. I can understand that. A lot of time zones, too. Yeah, it's like a, for, it's like a combination of time zones and life stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Always bad. Always bad. Just messes with everything. Yep. What'd they uh, do Tuesday? I don't think... There was? You didn't have vampires, did you? <coughs> we didn't have vampire on Tuesday, no. Oh, okay. That's why I don't remember it, because it didn't well, happen. But I wanted to mention the players. Yeah, uh, definitely. I did it. I was in Star Trek where we're four players in that one. Uh, yeah, no, no. Four players and like three NPCs or something? Did we have Star Trek this week? No, no we you canceled it last Trek. moment. Yeah, because the unfunny one, your DM has basement flooded because of a water heater blowing up. Yeah. So that yeah. was that was an issue. It was like, wow, yeah, that's a huge issue. <laughs> mm -hmm. We don't mind you going off and fixing that. Yeah, it should be fixed, so you probably will have your Star Trek game next week. But then we had, we actually had Carrie and Crown. Where we did oh, Carrie and Crown. <clears throat> the group call, by the way, has ten members. One of yeah. them is our DM. So just just oh. take that for a second. Man, I was talking so, with some people about the amount of players we've had in Carrying Crown. Carrying, uh, Carrying Crown, it's the unfortunate thing that I feel like our game of Carrying Crown, Carrying Crown, every time I run it, one time was it cursed. Let me put it that way. Yeah. I think it might just be Carrying Crown. <laughs> just, uh, just, I have, no, I, I have a, a theory to this. Not a game theory, just a regular theory. Oh, uh, not a game theory? No, 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 because it's a tabletop. It's not technically a game. True, it's true. experience. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but the, I was, I think we were actually talking about this yesterday or something. I think. Um, I know you and I were talking about it. Yeah. And part of the problem I feel that happened with Carrying Crown is you had, uh, at least two people who are coming back to it after a long break. One person, uh, who has an idea of how it would play based off third edition experience. One person who had absolutely no idea and I don't remember the other two people. The other two people might have had no idea what was going on. I know either. one of them had no idea. One of yeah, them was yeah, yeah. only a, a fifth edition person. Yeah. So you have people that are relearning the game, learning the new edition, and learning it from scratch. And so while the adventure path itself, I'm just going to call it a mixed bag. Uh, Agree. We had a lot of character issues. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because of how complex the system pathfinder is for character creation specifically as far as like actual rules go it's just a little bit more complex but because of the amount of options you can do the options you have are presented make it more complicated yeah. so if you were just plain core rulebook it's probably not any more complex than third edition um but we're not we were playing with a lot of things well, yeah. so i think oh boy i think some of the issues come down to like like who knew what actually ended up not mattering in the end? Because, like, if I yeah. can tell you, the three people that made characters that I don't think knew the system at all, because I think it was three people didn't know the system, uh, there was, like, two returning, and then one with the, 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 the third edition knowledge, you know? Mm -hmm. Of the three people that didn't know anything, one has made a perfectly functioning character without many issues. That's Jess. But Yep. <laughs> perfect, Jess per, per, made a witch. very functional witch. She made a perfectly functional witch. Mm-hmm. Never had really issues. That's it. Uh, one 
had issues. Umber. Because he didn't know mm-hmm. anything about the system. Yeah. The other... And chose a complicated class. Yeah, the other made a perfectly functioning character, played it for shit. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. And I think that was an issue, too. So, like, we had issues to begin with. That we lost someone very early on, right away. Like, their their schedule changed... Mm-hmm. And they had to go. So we were we had started with six. This was going to be my ambitious six group of people. We went down to five right away. Yep. Then we lost yeah, one after the first four. We dropped to four after the first adventure because um, I don't think they were ever into it. I don't understand. I I, I don't know. I I have spoken to this person. They do not like Pathfinder, but also life situations changed for them. As okay. Well. So it's a mix, mix of both. It's a mix of both. Like, I never really felt like they were into their character. No, anyway. I, I, I definitely could tell <laughs> that they did not like Pathfinder, just from the way they kind of played. And that's something of, like, never really gave it a chance, mm, I feel I like. Feel like yeah. There are simpler classes you can play to make the game easier to play. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if, oh, for example, if you're playing a Megas... You can mm-hmm. go absolutely insane bonkers. If you're playing a fighter, the game's pretty simple. Yeah. Like, um, like, I, I, I even feel the class that this one person played, it's not that complex. They just had a very eh, starting build, and I feel that also kind of ruined some of the experience. And yeah. also, it was a weapon that wasn't good against the specific things we were fighting. Yeah. Well... They That's should, more on the module. Also the refusal to use a melee weapon. The refusal of melee weapon and should have just gone with a pistol to start out with. Yep. The pistol would have yeah. been so much I, better. I, the way I would build that is uh, like a musketeer, a pistol, and a rapier. Bam. Functional character. You can yeah. always get the other weapons later. You can yeah, build you, them yep. cheaper. There's nothing to stop you from using a bigger gun later. The, the class lets you build the weapons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's, it's not like you can never get it again. Take, take the one you can reload really quickly and shoot every round. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's like taking crossbow man and like being like, I'm going to start with a heavy crossbow at first level. <laughs> you, you don't want to do that. Take the no, light crossbow really and crazy. reload it like once a turn. Because mm-hmm. uh, yeah, heavy crossbow in Pathfinder, it takes like a full round action it to does. reload it. Yeah. And yeah. Like, and you can take feats to make it better, right? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Because I'm like, I, I have a heavy crossbow in the 5e game. And it's just, you can only ever shoot it once around unless you um, take, like, the rapid reloader feed yeah. thing, whatever, crossbow expert. Yeah. And then the class that I'm playing, I won't get a second attack per round, so it literally doesn't matter that it yeah. has the loading property. Yep. Yeah. yeah. But I think, like, there were a lot of issues then with that, and then we went down to four characters, and we have had... Another person join, and then they ha- and then they kind of left, and I think like for them it just ended up being too difficult to return, kind of thing is what had happened. Yeah, yeah. because a lot had passed, um, and it was hard to jump there. Their work schedule change. Yeah, there were to- that was the original reason they had to leave, and then a lot happened in the game. So yeah, it was just difficult to come back at that point. Yeah, and and so we are technically at. Right. Five now because we got another person in, right? We're at, we got no, uh, let's see, we have Manacle and Olivia Driss. Five right now, though, yeah, we could five. have six. Technically, we theoretically we have six because Beatrix exists mm. in a nebulous existence That's of right. there, kind of. Because Jess yeah. has been hoping that like she'll get like you know into some things and she's been showing up for certain games and stuff. So she, she shows can... up sometimes for mine and she didn't show up this week because i she i had talked to her she sounded fucking like she was dying from some illness i think she had food poisoning oh god cool yeah the continued misadventures of poor jess i just yeah. i feel bad for her but like I really feel cool. um but yeah i think that's just kind of been our issue with carrying crown is so many people dropping having to drop in and out and then oh, class related stuff yep and I think um, it's also like but we just, had an adventure. You did have an adventure. You pretty much most of the adventure was dealing with a ghost, which wasn't. I think that that was that was an issue of being drowned out by people. I think because I feel like I you, we you, cured werewolfness. We cured you cured two people who were infected with werewolfism, as it was called in game. 
Um, oh, and then you dealt with more werewolves. And we killed a leader boy of somewhere. Oh, man, we spent so long on that stupid plan. And then we didn't do any. Look, I actually like every time you were coming up with different plans. I had, I had, I'd already thought. I thought of a response for each one of them. I'm like, which one of these are you gonna do? I got a response for each of these. Some of them were they would ignore them, like 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 yeah. half of your plans they would have ignored them. Uh, I like the idea of, of mage handing and throwing Durston's head up. I like that plan. Uh -huh. That was funny. That was a fun plan. <laughs> that was very I'm funny. <laughs> Like, because they're not dumb. They will fight to the death, but, like, they're not stupid enough just to, like, you know, especially because that's a really terrible choke point, and, you know, they're, like, uh... The plan probably would have been, it, depending on what you'd done, they could have probably just broken down one of the walls and run around behind you from the outside. Yeah. It, depending on what I, you had done, they might have done that. I had one of two planned. Uh, one... They both involved throwing spells at there. One was Ice Storm the entire room... That probably would have worked into a degree. The other was, what if I just throw a fireball up there and burn the building down, and then they get I would have, by undead? I, I would have been pro of that plan as well, but I am restricted on using fire spells. So. But when, you were, when we were talking about the ice storm and we're looking into it, you really only would have hit one of them. Yeah. Um, I, I positioned them on the map upstairs where I, where I thought they would be, and, like... That was just by chance. That yeah. when, we, when you put that circle down, it would have only hit one of them. And then the plan that worked the most was just go up there and slap them to death. <laughs> I mean, it was really a great plan. There and were so many crits. You got a lot of crits. They rolled fairly terribly, and so it ended up being a pretty good match. That you just yeah, it's uh, like there's here's this really powerful super boss man. He's got he all these died. abilities to bypass your immunity. Very fast. Oh, he's dead. Yeah, because like roll some <laughs> dice. And, and. That's the power of Anne. Well, it's also yeah. like he didn't roll above a 10 for nope. any attack, period. He, got one yeah. attack. Yeah, he I had think like one... three attacks in a round, which is He a had three lot. attacks. I think one hit one time where he rolled like a 19. So it's like. Yeah, he got he got like one attack off and it did like 30 damage. And then Anne healed all of it. <laughs> yeah. And the rest of the attacks were just like, well, that's a four. Yeah. That's not hitting. <laughs> yeah. And and my character had just been bitten by a werewolf and like didn't really was poisoned it. repeatedly. I mean the poison didn't do anything, but I mean I imagine they still feel awful. Yeah. They probably. just aren't physically affected. Yeah, it you probably feel awful. You're probably kind of like just like a lot of like a sickness to your stomach. You kind of feel like you might want to throw up. It's just not great cuz Yeah, but they don't actually throw up. It's just like, man, I feel like crap. I do not want to go up there and fight in a freaking <laughs> I have a bow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And so it's like, there's no reason for me to go up there. And other people, other people are like, no, let's just go up there and fight them. It's like maybe we can think of a better plan. I believe all three spellcasters are like, this seems dumb. How are we gonna do anything? And all the managers are like, no, we'll just, we'll just go up the ladder. We'll just go up yeah, the ladder. And we, we'll just go up there and sword them. Except for half of us are spellcasters. We can't just go up there and sword them. And it's like, ah, stupid spellcasters. <laughs> it, it, it was, it was just a lot of stupid arguments, and I, I was just done. I just didn't my... care anymore. Everyone else has, like, a sword. My melee weapon is a scarf. <laughs> That's what I gotta hit people with if they get hey, too close. A scarf. I, I got a plus one silver longsword now. I'll probably never use it, but hey, I have it. You yeah. Know? You could at least uh, fight with it, technically. You're yeah, proficient. I mean, I can pull it out and have, like, a, a have, plus five to hit, which is pretty awful. I've also <laughs> come to the conclusion I should never give Soren anything, because I, I conjured him a plus two sword, and he hit nothing with it. <laughs> I rolled so badly for him too. Thorin gets nothing anymore. Uh, man, yeah. like the, the the rolls I was making were just so terrible. Yeah, it, it was bad. <sighs> I'll have better rolls today. I will say, with the combination of spells I prepped to go up there, I did have twenty five AC. Uh huh. So I would have probably been fine getting uh, stopped. I cast one spell. Uh, mm -hmm. It was Acid Arrow. And yep. uh, it uh, did a pitiful amount of damage, and then on the next turn, he died. Yeah. I believe you min rolled. <laughs> you min -rolled. I don't know if I min rolled. I got like maybe like a one and a two. Yeah. Uh, and, and really bad. The fact is, like, even with your 25, the, the big boss would have still had a really good chance to hit you. He, yeah. His first attack was at plus 14. Yep. Um, <coughs> so. The only actual spell I cast was I thunderbolted two of them, and then I thunderstopped. Yeah, he knocked one up on the ground, and then he got, he got murdered because of it. Yeah, yeah. No, there was, was really. 
you, you guys got a lot of good checks. Mm -hmm. And they rolled terribly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we, we rolled like, like gods. I feel like that the Bad Pack Lord is probably very strong, and we just got lucky. Yeah. That battle was technically a little easy, because again, I think it's more balanced for one less player. Mm -hmm. But... Like, I don't feel... I feel like you got the dice really helped you in that one. Yeah. You have to remember, though, Tanto, is that I'm not really playing anything. I'm a support character. I sometimes can do damage if the, oh, the stars line the up. Bow. Yeah. Like I mean, the sneak attacks. That was that was a rare chance for my character to actually be good at something. Well, I mean, it's I, like I, you, a have, a, you have a possibility of damage, though, is one of those things. So yeah, I'm like half a character. Even with five players, you might have a support character just like you. Is what is you know yeah. they they account for mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So you're accounted for in the balance of a party makeup. You know, it's just the issue of you technically have six players still. You know, yeah. and that means yeah. that you're going to be a little more powerful than generally everything else. And I haven't really done a lot to add to it, just because. In deadly natures, and I, you know, I, I mean, mean, like, if you added one extra person per encounter, it might make a difference. It might make a huge difference. It probably would, and that's the thing is, it doesn't balance out very well, technically. But it depends on the level of creature you're doing, right? Yeah. If it's if it's a powerful creature, yes, that would be way too in favor of the creatures. But if it's like minion-y level, where it's like, like the werewolves, right? If you had a one extra minion werewolf. It's like, yeah, he's got attacks. Maybe he's got like a plus nine to hit or something, you know, but they're because we have more overall actions in general mm -hmm. and then because there's more of us we have like a higher hit pool, hit, hit points total, right? Uh, that's kind of how I look at encounters, which may be wrong, but that's how I look at them. No, that's that's a, not a bad way of looking at it. I think, I think in Pathfinder it balances in a very different way than it balances in 5th edition though, but there are some oh, similarities. Sure. Yeah. So you can definitely look at those similarities when bringing things down. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, the multiple attacks is a thing, and yeah. uh, it it doesn't help. I think that our party dynamic is basically almost all spellcasters, which are either very powerful or very weak, depending on what encounter you're in. Right. Spellcaster, 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 spellcaster. There's only spell one non-spellcaster. Spellcaster. Yeah, there, yep. there's a there's a person who punches things, and then and there's like two half casters. Yeah, and and, and there there's a person who punches things, and then six spellcasters, two of which switch out currently. Yep. You know, so as soon as like B shows up, tags out Soren. I mean, I, I'll have him around if like if you like, oops, you need to divine something rather, and you can be like, cough, cough, let me show up out of the shadows, mm -hmm. and be like, divine I, magic. I've been here the whole time. <laughs> and divine magic. <laughs> Woo. Yeah. So that was Carrying Crown. Yeah. Uh, oh, there was a ghost, but... Yeah, there was a ghost. <laughs> that was more of like, hey, do we want to fight a ghost? Not really. Oh, he's going to fight you now. It's like, wait, what? Yeah, so because... Of course, that thing of, I uh, like, there are... <laughs> Why would we know that? I was talked over, and Umber didn't remember you could actually have conversations with ghosts. Yeah, there was, there was a lot of issues with, like, what was going on at that point. I think we were all getting tired at that point in time a little bit, yeah, too. Yeah, because it was, it was kind of a... I think, it wasn't necessarily a long session, but it was... It was towards our end time. Because or, technically, right time. then and there, though, Umber wandered off because he wasn't feeling great. Yeah, yeah, that's true. That happened. So Umber was already not feeling great. So like he was already yeah. distracted with stuff too. Also, yeah. And, and yeah. then and like, I wasn't getting anywhere near that ghost. I was like, I'm gonna stay in the hallway. I'm also not a conversationalist, like in the character or kind yeah. of in general. And, and like I didn't want to have like Soren take the lead again, and like no one had told Manacle you can talk to ghosts. Yeah, it was, it, it was a weird thing. It was a it weird happened. thing. I'm just Worked like, out in the end. I just, I just didn't want another ghost fight because they're a bitch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> ghosts are painful in Pathfinder. Yeah. It would have just been annoying of a combat, mm -hmm. you know. That's why I was just like, whatever. You can talk to it. Someone figured that out, you know. You can. I, I think Olivia. Check. Yeah, because knew Olivia, them. Olivia yeah. knew the person. Yeah. And I was like, Olivia's from that town. And the thing is. It wasn't even that difficult of a diplomacy check at this point in time. It was DC 25, which Manacle... Yeah, I think Olivia actually failed, but then it's like, Manacle, you can help Olivia, and then, like, rolled a 33 or yeah. something. Yeah, so I'm just like, but Manacle it's like, cool. says it. It's like, Manacle, hey, look, man, dude, what's going on here? Don't, what's wrong with don't you? Don't fight us. We don't hey, want to fight you, bro. Calm down. You're just here yeah. to talk. 
So it worked out in the end, but uh, you know that happens. Sometimes. Yeah, that's a thing that happens sometimes. I mean, like it, it's. I feel like that entire thing wasn't handled as well on my end too, but it was sort of like it was just. I don't know. We were all feeling a little miffed at that point in time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anything else happen on a Wednesday for anybody? Uh, I didn't do anything else on Wednesday. Uh, no. I normally have another Wednesday game, but, uh, real life has been kicking the butt of one of the players, so we didn't have it. Mmm. Okay. Yeah, we might have it this week. Okay. But, you know, I, I, the game is in the tail end. Uh, I don't know how many sessions are left, but there's a big, huge climactic thing going on. Um, we had to beat up an angel who just flew away because that's... They, they, they can just do that. Yeah. Uh, I've talked about the encounter. Uh, it, it, it wasn't good. It's just the short version. Mm-hmm. Uh, but that was like two weeks ago. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Uh, anybody have anything else on Thursday or should I move uh, on? Uh, so... My Thursday game was cancelled due to the combination of I was floored from a vaccine and Jess had the beginning of the food poisoning. Mm. You had... I had Turn of Wrath. Um, we were down Lee. Uh, so originally I was going to play it in a very different way, but they decided to, like, some of the things they decided to do was, like, okay, yeah, you're deciding to do this, you know. I was there for some of it, and I remember just chaos. Well, it started out where they're like, we're going to go deal with this horrible thing in our basement. And I'm like, okay, I guess that's fine to deal with. I mean, it is a thing you have to deal with at some, one of the horrible things in their basement. (laughs) One of. (laughs) One of. (laughs) Which, I've been thinking about it, and I'm like... Uh, this is something that I thought about, like, a couple weeks ago, like, and I'm like, you know, there's all this, like, weird pseudo-Phyrexian technology down in their basement. What the hell is powering it? They've mm. got to have some kind of, like, magical power source. Is it in these things, or does the, would the guy have made, like, some kind of version of, like, a reactor using magic? Oh, let's build this reactor. Mm-hmm. So, I made the magical reactor thing. Uh, yeah, like, I remember parts of that. It was pretty crazy sounding. It was, it was supposed to sound pretty crazy sounding. Granted, like, if, if they didn't dive into how it works, it was probably a little lot simpler than they would have thought. But, like, again, like, Joe's character doesn't know things and wasn't going to play around with it. He, like, showed up and, like, hmm, what the fuck is this thing? <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. touch it. I think someone else decided to touch it. A certain oh goblin person? Well, that was taking apart the tubing, where I was like, there is a horrible acetic substance that's used in this power cell that's that's filled with electrical energy. Do you take it's acid a battery? and electric? <laughs> yeah, basically they have battery fluid passing through these t- like tubes from the main generator. <laughs> <laughs> and nice. so he's like, I'm going to pull out the, the, the tubing, and it just like spills all over him. And I'm like, yeah, that's happening. Uh, that's you take... Tr- Acid and electric damage. That's yeah. Poor, poor boy. That's fine. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And then they uh, they killed the demon and, you know, tracked that to the source. And now they're going to go f- find out what's going on there in the uh, the one entrance that they found, which is underwater. Which I'm like, there's, there's a submersible dock. There's probably a miniature submersible hidden somewhere. <laughs> We're also technically down two players. Well, Winters, Lindsay has been on hiatus for a while, who was in chat a little earlier. Um, I'd like her to come back. I mean, she talked about it on one of the days we were playing Siege. I just, I think I have to brace it to her, like, ahead of time for a little bit to see, like, if she really does and, you know, what the plan would be for her coming back. Because, I mean, her character's been there in the background. It's, yeah. it, it just says she's been, she's been here since they got to college. It's just that some college shenanigans have happened without her here. So, there are so many shenanigans that happened. I mean, mixed bag on shenanigans. Swamp. To, the swamp. Swamp in the backyard. Swamp in the backyard. <laughs> I'm just going to reference that. Anybody who's watched the show knows about swamp in the backyard. Yeah, swamp in the backyard. Um, but for the most part, you've been pretty consistent in that game with players. Yeah, that, that game was pretty consistent. We were... We've been at four for a while since Lindsay's hiatus, but even then, we're we're pretty good at keeping the four. 
it's just uh, uh, like this week Lee was not in a you know just needed a night off. It was like some th some things were happening on the personal side, and it was just like I need I need a night off, and I'm like, fine, well, that's okay. You know, that happens to us all. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta say, nah, I can't do this. I'm not gonna be in a mindset to do it. I'll be like all like, fuck you're stupid. I mean, I'm yeah. fuck you're stupid just normally, but <laughs> yeah, me too. Have you, have you get you guys have been in my games. You know how weird it is. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Darn Steve. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh jeez, dude. Steve. Uh. So great. Uh, I both love and hate Steve. Mm, there, there's okay. your response. Everyone, everyone needs a Steve in their life. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, but if that's it for Thursday. Mm -hmm. I think that's it for Thursday. Yeah, Anything Friday? Time for the worst for last. Ah. Oh, no, it was it was amazing. Stuff was awesome. happens. It, I, in terms of players, I, I guess in player number, I have somewhere between four and six. Mm -hmm. Um, Lindsay, the story is getting told. Okay. <laughs> we were You're, down two. We were down two people. One was sick. Both were sick, actually. Yep. Um. I was like, sure, I'll, I, I can run it. It's just going to be like a uh, bookkeeping, shopping session. And it was, for the most part. Uh, they bought I, some items, sold some things. Uh, yeah, I had already eat. done all the math for selling things. Yeah. So we just had to decide on how many we were selling. And uh, The wizard, air quote, or whatever, was like, no, we're keeping this book. It's like, all right, I guess we'll keep the book then. <laughs> yeah, and then we appeared the next day with some kind of bird. Yeah. Um... Yeah. Just spent 60 gold on a bird. Wait, yeah. kind of, so it's, it's Mads bird. with a bird? Again? <laughs> paired with a bird. A talking bird that repeats words. It's a raven. Mm. Um, and then... And then it happened. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay, oh, yeah. the, Lindsay seven, the, the seven days had come up. Lindsay had to feed again. Lindsay decided to try to drink the elves of a cowboy, or try to drink the dreams of a cowboy, and one roll, someone rolled two seventeens on disadvantage. I had, I had disadvantage for seven because I was technically asleep, and I just rolled two seventeens. You got like which a ended to be like twenty-two or twenty-three because I'm then, like a plus five. Lindsay rolled like a fourteen advantage stealth check. So I woke up. I'm like, hey. What are you Wait. in my room for? <laughs> and then and I was like, "Oh, I, I'm I, just here to like suck your dreams or something." I'm like, then, "Well, I don't have those, so uh, you can uh, leave now." <laughs> the key part: the ranger who was on watch to make sure nothing weird happened was told, "I need you just to leave. Just go, please. I need you to leave." Like, oh, that's right. The, we had a, such a long conversation that you, the ranger got a second opportunity to roll for perception to hear, and I think got a nat 20. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, you hear them. There's some conversation coming from upstairs. And the, so they showed up and was like, what, what's going on? Why are you both awake? And why are you in their room? Please leave. Yeah. And I was like, leave. I, I, go away. I'm having a conversation here. Um, yeah, the, the conversation and... was, leave my room, please. Yep. Uh, so Lindsay, <laughs> failing to, to consume the dreams of that person, went to the next room. Felt their stealth check, pushed out of that room. <laughs> yep, the yep. room realized, oh, that's the barbarian's room. No. <laughs> the, the only two rooms that were left were the NPC who was housing them and the old old man who she had previously drank dreams from. Who has a bird now? Who has a bird now. And the bird saw what Lindsay's character was going to do. And Lindsay bri tried to bribe the bird with money. <laughs> And bird attacked. Our Winfred woke up. Lindsay cast a sleep spell in the room. The bird, the bird has one hit point. Put the bird and Winfred to sleep. Tried to consume dreams. Oh shit! You can't. You don't dream in magical sleep. I need to leave. Uh, ran out the room. Did drink the dreams of the NPC, and that's not where it, it doesn't even end there. No, there's so many more things happened. <laughs> um, everyone at this point is, uh, wakes up. They are now aware of what Lindsay's character was doing. Lindsay's character is hiding in their room with the door locked. Tries to sneak out the window. Of Where the I'm door. cooking breakfast, well, so well, I see like, them. Yeah. 
throws a rope out, tries to climb down. Lindsay's character's room is right above the kitchen. Legs are just dangling in front of the kitchen window. Lightning's hair just opens up the window and like, Hi, how are you? Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> That's the wrong way to get to the kitchen. <laughs> and then they just book it and just leave for like five hours. They're just gone. Five hours to go get drunk. Yeah, it might have been actually longer than that because I think it was like they come back at five. Yeah, they come back at five. So this is so like if we woke up at eight, that's Mm -hmm. that's nine hours of just being at a bar. They're just gone. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I showed off my new wing. Yeah, you got you got a new wing. Yeah, yeah, just one? Uh, because I flew down into a pit, and they're like, whoa, we're going to have to talk about that later. And I was just like, yeah, sure. And honestly, I honestly thought we were going to forget about it. But the old man's like, ah, oh, so, uh, Charles, uh, we're going to talk about those wings you have? And it was interrupted. Oh, wings. You said wings, so I thought it was, like, one wing angel. I was going to make a no, Final Fantasy joke. No, no, two wings. Jokes. It's just right. one's different now. Yeah. Um, one's a little but different. My Final Fantasy joke. Yeah. That it's conversation got interrupted by uh, Jeremy bailing out of the window on a rope. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, huh, well, let's just never speak of this again. And then after they got chased away, it got brought up again. So I'm like, all right, yeah, uh, I-, I was cursed a long time ago. Um, and then people were like, whoa, are you going to curse us too? I'm like, no, that's not how the curse works. It's not how it's curses just work, you idiots. So then they're like, all right, well, as long as we're not going to get cursed, this is fine. So it's like, all right. Uh, and then they had a conversation with why it's not okay to drink people's dreams. <laughs> yeah, uh, and then uh, this is Jeremy, um, who got interventioned on drinking dreams, <laughs> and um, they're like, "Yeah, I'm just, I'm just cursed." So then, uh, that's when I just finally took off the duster and showed that I have a black feathered wing and a black like bat wing now, because I'm very cursed. <laughs> Which, by the way, it wasn't always a feathered wing. That happened recently. <laughs> yeah, that may have happened the night before. Yeah, yeah, so that was a thing I experienced. Uh, I was technically asleep for nine hours, but yep. nobody in the party noticed. That's weird for an elf to be asleep for nine hours. Yeah, I because I went to bed early, and then everyone else sleeps like eight hours or whatever, right? So by the time everyone was up and about... I just slept in a little bit. But elves don't sleep in. But it never got, like, no one questioned it. Like, oh, so Chaz was uh, sleeping in and today. No, nope. No I think one's... they were busy with something else. <laughs> no, no one noticed. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, it was, it was I, a comedy of errors. I started that session thinking it's just going to be like a short boring downtime shopping session we'll probably wrap up in like i don't know an hour and a half now nah, three hours of comedy oh you did lie to most of the party i i think i think you rolled like a 22 yeah. deception at one point but i think i nat 20 and got like a 24 insight mm-hmm. so I, I I still think there was one thing that I believe, but I think maybe someone else rolled high enough. Uh, yeah. it, it, there was so much lying going on. It was Jeremy is a filthy liar, so mm-hmm. we've learned. Yes, they're um, very good at lying. Very good at lying. Um, but God, I I had something planned for if if the it worked if Cowboy they dreams. did get to, to drink the dreams and it would have been really weird but I'm actually kind of happy this other thing happened because it was much funnier yeah it was funnier um, <sighs> a certain a certain thing got revealed to the NPC I was given a chance to understand it and I'm like because it's like I've read these books that talk about creatures and stuff and Mom was like yeah you'd have advantage on this world and I'm like alright that's weird but okay I rolled I I failed. I think you rolled I like a, a nine. Three. Yeah, you rolled low, unfortunately. I, I mean, I have a one to my religion. PC <laughs> was a... was like fifteen or something because it's a common thing. Yeah, like... and and so I'm like that's weird, and then I didn't think about it later, and then they had the conversation with the NPC and then the player, and I'm like, oh, I understand what they are now, um, and uh, I, I might have been having too much fun, so I don't I don't know if I was overstepping my. You my didn't. Guessing. The important thing is you didn't 
say anything out loud. You DM. I did not say anything out loud. Mm -hmm. I, I did. I did message you, but you didn't yeah, respond. You, you messaged that, me in excitement. Yes. But you didn't say anything out loud, which is the important part. Which I have a player who does say things out loud. <clears> that he's thinking, which I, I think is annoying, but whatever. I I, I want to say that the the whole air quotes wizard thing is already kind of a known joke. Everyone knows. Yeah. At least player wise, everyone knows that the wizard is actually a wizard, warlock. The wizard is a warlock and wizards can't cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> but we don't really know it's Eldritch Blast, technically. No one has rolled Arcana on it. Um, it's just like, oh, it's a magic thing they do. It's named a very specific way. Um, yeah. It's through the actions you can kind of tell what the character's class is. But your your characters don't know. Yeah, because we no one, we have absolutely no idea in character. No one's rolled anything, or even no one's even requested to roll anything, which I respect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, unless it starts getting weird, there's like no real reason to question yeah, it, it. There's not really much of a reason because it's not getting at all weird. Warlocks aren't that weird most. Of time most of the time yeah. certain kinds mm -hmm. are like yeah, it's just magic. one gets pretty weird it's totally magic <laughs> when, when prince magic blast when <laughs> prince magic blast yeah, yeah it is. um now if winfred starts you know doing like devil chants and talking to his i don't know his, his magic sugar daddy asmodeus then then you might want to question it just yeah, I actually don't know what their patron pack is, but I figured <clears throat> out based off the wizardy thing, it's like, are they probably packed of the tome? Because they yeah, can, they had I, a use for the spell book. Mm -hmm. But like... I, mm, and you've never seen Winfred with a spell book. Mm -hmm. That's true, but they really wanted this one. Mm -hmm. And then after they were done with it, they're like, alright, we can sell it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, Which, I think they're yeah. known for players that it's Winfrey yeah, of some kind. Yeah, uh, it's my mm. character's going through some stuff. <laughs> uh, so I don't think they really are super insightful about the rest of the party besides the one that broke into the room and was like, "I want to suck your dreams." <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't think you can do that for one. And also, no. <laughs> I, I do, I do like that. Immediately getting caught. Not making something up like, oh, I heard a noise up here or something. No. Hey, I need to suck your dreams. But they lied to everybody else. They told the truth to the cowboy of why they were in there, but lied to every single other person. We're like, yeah, I'm just like a guard, checking on guard things. Because I think I like immediately was like, yeah, guards don't break into people's rooms. Mm -hmm. And then like it was like honesty immediately. Like, yeah, I want to suck your dreams. I need them. I need your dreams. Please go back to bed. I want your dreams. It's like... What the heck? No! <laughs> you can't you can't have my dreams. And two, I don't dream. Uh, <laughs> it was great. It was really fun. Sounds like great fun. Go back to sleep. I'm not yeah. here to steal. I <laughs> not here to steal, I promise. I just want your dreams. <laughs> yeah, you weren't here to steal anything from me. Just wanted the dreams. Good times. Oh, man. Sounds like it was a good week of crazy stuff. Yeah. All right. I think we should get going, though. Yeah, yeah this has been a little long. Yeah, it's a little long, long and, and I technically still want to run to the store before we get our adventures, meaning My I... My game is consistently late now. <laughs> I, look, you know, I, I... As long as we end at a reasonable time for discussing tabletop, usually I'm okay on timing. Yeah. yeah. Usually. We, we went a little long. I mean, it's my glorious return, because I actually wasn't busy with real life. Yeah. But, uh... Thank you, Lightning and Momo, for joining me this week. Yeah. Uh, I hope everybody enjoyed the poor show. <laughs> the discussions and, and poor Jeremy uh, at his dream eating. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be back next week for more exciting discussions and adventures. And otherwise, uh, yeah, I think that's about it that I can think of off the top of my head. So yep. until those Stick times, around for all the other shows. Yep. Yeah. Uh, stuff on uh, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Mondays and Tuesdays, two p.m. EST, both on those days. Thursdays, eight eight thirty in the evening. Uh, yep. Yeah. So anyway, until those times, farewell for now. Bye, everyone. See ya. <laughs>